These are road cars up to 2 litre or 2,000 cc's. Uh, the class, you can, we have completely standard cars. We have, you are allowed some modifications. Um, some of these cars have added safety equipment to them because the competitors just want it that way, uh, which you are allowed. Uh, you can also do change your brakes and uh, do a bit of internal engine work, a bit of an exhaust system. Um, and bits and pieces so you can run you can literally drive from the shop get here uh, run the car up the hill or you can uh, you know have a little more do sporty modifications so David Garnett Gannett, sorry my ice cream cone got stuck David Garnett in the Renault Clio he's off the line uh, and you'll see him on the screen there through Orchard already heading up into uh, a Torres and over to you, Benoit. I've lost Benoit for a second. Anyway, David's heading up into uh, Pardon, through Pardon, and that's a very steep corner. And then David Wilson's on the line in a Peugeot 205. You okay, Benoit? I'm back. Sorry. Uh, didn't press the button. <laughs> and so, yeah, so this is one of the uh, many players that were seated down the hill uh, from David Garnet is already through semicircle at the top of the hill here, here. This is one of the Mark II, one of the two litres uh, car, an engine that's been um, developed over the years in the late 90s and is one of the naturally aspirated. The uh, much more modern uh, players are uh, running a 1.6 turbo, but uh, quickly followed in the other hot, um, hot hatch, uh, French ones. Uh, this is the 205, so this is four cylinder 1.9 litre uh, car that is I've uh, been uh, running in rally and hill climbs and everywhere. Uh, a very popular car, uh, a car that's celebrated 40 years uh, anniversary uh, this year. Um, and so David Garner just posted a 52.52. Uh, David Wilson will go, be going through the finish line in 50.43. Yeah, that's very quick. David Wilson's just a 4 100s down on uh, Yang Langmead uh, after second practice. This is his third practice. Um, 
John Chalmers in the completely standard Mazda MX-5 is on the line, uh, on the, it's just launched, sorry, he's already coming through the S's up the top. Peter Siddle in a Renault, another Renault Clio, this one's got over 200 horsepower in it, still within the rules, but he's gone and done a bit more modifications to it. He'll be looking to improve on his morning time. James Chalmers has done a 57.09, that's about a two second improvement just over from this morning. Peter Siddle should be up with you, and I got James Hudson with a golf just leaving the line now. Yeah, Peter would be uh, looking to improve on his uh, previous morning runs uh, this uh, morning, 51.13 earlier this morning, and uh, having a chat with him this morning, he was very much looking to go for the class record this weekend, so this is still practice, but we'll be looking to get quicker uh, through this run. It's a 49.26 uh, for Peter Siddle. Yeah, James Hudson, uh, I'll check the class record, I'm sure Ben was got it. So James Hudson in his golf, it's a 1.8, 16 valve, got about 180 horsepower and change. Um, very quick this car was, uh, actually finished third in class at the, la the event last weekend. So he's already up to you and I've got Richard Pates in the MGF Trophy 160 that's just launched all I'm James Hudson's dropping wheels in the grass and everything, a 49.95. Um, Peter Siddle normally is sort of the, the pace setter here, but James Hudson, he's, he's going to make a go of it this weekend, I think. The yellow MGF you see on the screen, only paid 500 pounds for it. Brilliant starter car. He's out here competing hill climbing, has done nothing to it. It had an MOT on it, and he's just out enjoying it. It's just, he's been out this, I'm not quite sure which event, but he's done at least half, you know, he's up to half a dozen coming up to it. And uh, yeah, so you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to go racing. Yeah, this is a great illustration, uh, and the MGF has been very popular. Um, car uh, here in, in the UK, uh, the K uh, series, uh, with 160 horsepower, the trophy being a bit more um, sporty with um, sporty suspension and the uh, body kit, but quickly followed by Jonathan uh, Langmeader, who's been the quickest so far in practice uh, earlier this morning. Uh, this is um, Series 2, uh, Lutus Elise, uh, still with a uh, K series engine, the Rover 1.8 at the back, a 49.72 for John. Uh, quickly followed by Oliver Mick, which is um, driving this beautiful VX220. Uh, you might think it's very similar to the Lotus Elise, and you're not wrong. This is built on the same aluminium uh, bonded chassis, uh, glued together, a very innovative uh, way of putting a chassis together. Instead of welding it, you glue the pieces together, which makes it lighter. And those cars will be about 800 kilo, and this VX220 Vauxhall is running a two liter turbocharger in at the back. Yeah, Oliver Meek's gone across with a 54.79. We're now into road cars over two liter. So these are two wheel drive cars over two liter. Same rules apply that I described earlier. We have Philip James on the course in the Porsche Cayman 718 GT4. We've got Simon, uh, which you see on your screen now. Simon Tarling is just going through Itores now and up into Pardon in the Porsche 996 GT3. And Ross McDonald in the classic Porsche 911 2.7, but it's got a 3.2 in it. It's just launched off the line. Uh, we had a 49.82, over to you. Yeah, Simon, uh, in this beautiful 996 GT3, this is one of the latest uh, of the analog Porsches, and the GT3 being the sort of the track version of the 996, running the 3.6 Mezger engine at the back. Beautiful sound, um, great car to drive, and a very collectible car now. 51.16 for Simon Tarling. But here's another Porsche, this is Ross McDonald, and in this much uh, more classic 911 air-cooled engine in this case. And um, this is a car that's been campaigning for many years. This is a 3.3 liter um, capacity, so quite a big engine for this car, but very beautifully balanced. And uh, obviously the Porsches with the engine at the back gives them great uh, balance and traction out of the line and out of the uh, tricky corners and twisty corners here on the hill of Prescott. Yeah, 51.18, so two 100s behind Simon Tarling, Tarling just tied it into sixth place there. Rodney Isles is on your screen now. Now, he, won, he, he fended off all the Porsche combatants last weekend to take the class win and was uh, trying to get within the class record with less than a second. So he's looking to put, yeah, there he goes. He's just set a 47.53 that's put him back on top uh, on the practice runs. These are our own, this is third practice. Richard York at a Porsche Cayman 718 GT4 is just heading into Pardon right now. 
and the previous fastest time Porsche is on the line, Robert Lancaster Gate. Yeah, fantastic time uh, from Rodney Hills. He's uh, the record uh, class holder in this uh, beautiful half Faramo 4C. Um, but obviously the Porsches uh, in this class will be looking to have their own competition. We've got a number of Porsche came in GT4s uh, running um, today. This is the 4 litre engine and for a very long time Porsche was holding back on the potential of that car. This is the middle um, mid-engine uh, Porsche as opposed to the 90, classic 911 with the engine hanging out the back and that gives them uh, great balance and uh, great traction through the corners. A very easy car to drive compared to the 911 who might have been a bit tricky um, in some situations. Yeah, he, uh, he was down into the 49, or sorry, he did a 48.95 on second practice uh, and actually was ahead of Rodney Isles who's the pace setter. But uh, the question is, is he going to keep up with Rodney or is Rodney figuring it out and just going to keep that alpha just slightly ahead? Uh, 48.31, so an improvement, but not enough. The alpha Romeo is currently the, the, the in, in pole position, if you will. Um, it's not qualifying, but it's practice. Robbie Birrell in another Porsche Cayman GTS is just coming through the S's now. And Ian Richards in a Renault Clio 182 has just gone off the line. He's an under two liter because these are double driven cars. We've got the second drivers coming through. Yes, and if you wondered uh, why the Cayman GTS sounds a bit like a Subaru, well, it's running a four cylinder turbocharged engine, engine boxer engine, 2.5 liter. It was a bit controversial at the time because it wasn't a six cylinder like we used to see on most of the Porsches, uh, but it gives them some very, very interesting um, tuning capacity. And I'm sure. Um, uh, Robbie will, will be looking to uh, get all the potential from that car. Quickly followed um, is uh, Ian Richards already halfway through uh, the second part of the hill through semi-circles. Um, but meanwhile we've got Robert Wilson who's firing this uh, car 67 miles an hour under the bridge already through the first airpin here um, going through the straight and he'll look to improve on his previous time. Yeah, Ian Richards has done a 52-62, uh, a little bit quicker to second practice, but not a lot. But Robert Wilson, this is uh, dad, Dave is the son, father and son team. They've been very, really, very quick in this car. So I'm interested to see, Dave is just slightly ahead of Robert at the moment. Robert's coming across the top of the end of the line now. He's going to go over with a 5-0.03 and literally pushes Dave down one place. So he's sitting in fourth. So in road going series production, a class A1, after three practice runs, Rodney Isles, sorry, A2, Rodney Isles is holding the lead. And in A1, Peter Siddle is holding the lead. These are all practice for tomorrow's timed runs. Next up, we've got David Meek in the VX220 Turbo. It's double driven, so we've already seen Oliver Meek. Now we're seeing David Meek. I will say Oliver had a little problem at the top of part and it lost a little bit, so that might have affected things a bit. And then we got Ian Fido in a four, and then we got the four-wheel drive cars of Ian Fido in a Yaris, uh, the white one you see on your screen. Now David Meek's done a 5107, that puts him up to fifth in class, in practice. Uh, Ian Fido followed by Isab Izzy Lawrence uh, in the Mitsubishi Evo 6, so uh, she's got a little more horsepower than the Toyota. Uh, Ian should be with you. Yes, uh, Ian already uh, exiting uh, the uh, left hand and into the entry of semicircle. This is um, a 1.6 um, three cylinder turbo engine uh, with uh, some tricky differentials um, on that car uh, from the circuit pack. And uh, this is a car that's been uh, very popular on the hills um, today, but. Um, Back in the late 90s, early 2000, we could see the Evo 6, that easiest campaigning uh, today. She's got a lot more grunt in that car, um, so she'll probably be leading the class uh, today, but she's also a fantastic driver, and you can already see she'll be going up through the finish straight and through the finish line. It'll be a 51.13 for easy. Actually, it's a 49.13. You, 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 you took away two seconds. Anyway, 49.13, and I know she's targeting PBs, and that might be one. I'll have to check on that. Peter Richings, uh, a longtime circuit racer, has switched over to Hills, and this is literally the family car, another Toyota GR Yaris. And I got Ben Fisher, who's uh, jumped into his dad's Subaru because his single seater engine has gone kaput. Yes, uh, the other uh, four-wheel drive Japanese car, turbocharged engine. 
here on the hill today. This is running the two litre um, engine, so the early 2000 cars here, um, four wheel drive, very popular cars that we have seen uh, winning multiple uh, rally championships um, around the world. But uh, Raymond Lord is um, campaigning this beautiful uh, Caterham 7. Um, it's an uh, almost 2.1 litre um, engine, a beautiful car, and Raymond is always a very quick uh, driver in this car. Yeah, him and Joe, Joe Hoyle uh, share this car, and they are normally within hundreds of each other, which is quite impressive. Um, so across the line he goes with a 48.32. That was actually slower. Uh, that's over... Yeah, eight tenths slower than the second practice run. But Anthony Sherman in Caterham 310R. We are now in Class B for Caterhams, Westfields, and an AMS Matego. Um, so Anthony's with you. John Pick has gone off the line in the AMS Britaya to you. Yes, uh, we've got uh, John Pick uh, going through uh, the left S's. And this is a four-wheel drive um, running the... Uh, Subaru uh, Impreza WRX running gears, so um, four-wheel drive, boxer four, and on a much lighter chassis than um, the cars that we've just seen uh, before. Um, but in this class, in the road going specialist production class, it's mostly Caterhams in Westfield, um, a design that dates back to the early 60s, uh, from uh, a design that was uh, first uh, drawn by Colin Chapman, and the recipe is very easy. Uh, an engine at the front, rear driven wheels and um, a very lightweight car so very simple and that produces some very very exciting racing and this class is always super competitive. It is. Uh, John Pick did a 47.68 in the Matea. Anthony Shearman got down to a 51.26 so both improved times. Jerry Neary has just crossed the line with a 51.88 that's an improvement of 1.2 seconds. Rob Lloyd is somewhere up in the S's right now, and Richard Price has just come through Orchard. You see him on the screen now in the Caterham 7, car 51. Very rapid. He's actually the class leader at the moment in practice uh, in that Westfield SEIW, the W standing for wide track or wide body. And then Richard Price, another quickie in this class, has just launched off the line as well. Yes, uh, 48, 8, 9 for Rob, um, but quickly followed by um, Richard Price is in, in this uh, 1.6 uh, Ford Sigma engine, so a smaller capacity engine, but Richard has been uh, quite quick uh, so far. He's the quickest so far in the run, in the second run, and it improves at 46.27 yeah. for Richard Price. That puts him two seconds quicker than Ray Lohr. Steve Garner uh, is usually in that neighborhood, and I will say he's purple sectors all the way up. He's lost a little bit in the S's, so the question is, can he get in? Can he actually get ahead of Richard Price in that 46s? Timothy Higgins in the Westfield SEI, SEI, the orange one, is just going into pardon now. Steve Gardner's at a 46.53, and that's just three tenths behind Ray Price. Uh, Timothy Hargins to pardon, and Andrew Russell in the next class up. This is modified production. Is on left, 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 left the line. Yes, uh, Tim is here looking uh, to be a bit slower than uh, what I would expect uh, from um, this car. Um, but he's uh, making his way through the second half of the hill uh, here with um, no problem. Hopefully he'll get to uh, finish his run. Uh, he seems to have some intermittent issues. Um, seems to be going on and off um, through the second part of his run. But uh, we've got uh, Andrew Russell, who's a regular competitor here in this championship, in this really 14 to G15. He's been campaigning this car for a very long time. It's very lightweight, just about 800 kilo, probably a bit less uh, than this. And uh, he's campaigning uh, this Coventry Climax engine at the back, um, which is uh, what we saw in the next car here today on the hill, uh, going through Pardon, is uh, Eric Murray um, in this beautiful Ilman Imp. Yeah, uh, I'll just say Timothy Higgins had a bit of an awful run, lost 10 seconds on his practice run in the previous class. Uh, Andrew Russell's done a 51.41, so a little bit quicker, uh, but Eric Morey's done a 48.98, and he's actually going quicker again. Um, he's just heading across the line with a 49.19, so a little bit slower than his second practice time. 
Uh, on your screen now is Phil Fisher. You just saw son Ben driving the car. We have a return road at this point. At, at Prescott, we have a return road. So we don't have to stop for batch changes or anything like that, which is why you're seeing continuous cars going up the road and giving us a workout. So Phil Fisher, the Subaru, is headed up towards the, you can see him in there coming out of the S's now. Duncan Andrews is on the course coming through Hittores in a Porsche Cayman. And now we're into the four-wheel drive car. And then Stephen Moore in the modified Itsubishi Evo 6 is off the line. And we're looking for a really good time from that car. Yes, uh, the Cayman uh, of uh, Duncan already um, through uh, the S's and exiting and entering now uh, semi-circle. This is a 3.9 uh, Porsche Cayman. Um, so it brought out engine from um, the uh, 3.6 litre that you'd find usually in those cars. It sounds beautifully, it's a beautiful six-cylinder Porsche distinctive sound, but Stephen Moore is going to be probably the one that will be looking to take the class lead in this car and his beautiful um, Evo 6. There's not much left in this car, just the steering wheel, three pedals, and it will be pushing that car uh, like nothing else. Yeah, he's hunting for PBs and there are 44.44. I know what his target is, that's quicker, but he's got, not going to be happy with that. We've got Nigel Elliott in the Triumph TR7 V8 on your screen, just heading through Pardon, out the top and heading into the S's. And Joey Hoyle in the Caterham Silver Super Sprint, uh, shares with Ray Lork, Class B car, double driven. She's launched off the line and should be coming around the Tories now. Yeah, Nigel, uh, this is a car that's uh, rebuilt this year and um, he thought uh, V8 was not enough in this car, so he's just bought it two turbos on it. So probably need roughly about 500 horsepower in this car. Um, and so um, he'll be going through um, the finish line. It's a 52.45, uh, but Joy Hall uh, following um, him very uh, quickly, already through semi-circles, and it's gonna be a good time. This uh, too, this is a shared car, and they'll be uh, looking at uh, tussling time together, 48.55. Yeah, that keeps her in about uh, fifth place, but she's only two tenths behind Ray, so that, uh, that battle will continue on. Stuart Dow, this is a modified specialist production car. Now, it's Class D, because it looks like a Caterham, but it actually has a motorcycle. It has a Hayabusa engine in it, so this fits into the modified class. It's on racing slicks. He's flying around, he's all Billy No Mates today and uh, nobody else in the class with him. And a 43.77, so that laid down a bit of uh, a bit of a time. Now we've just got a slight delay on the start line here. Uh, just making sure everything's in position, safety equipment's all checked out. The marshals are very vigilant, vigilant at this. And I just want to shout out to all the marshals around the world if you're listening. Uh, and especially at Prescott, uh, the rescue crews as well. Uh, all volunteers, uh, all love the sport. They're out here just enjoying the atmosphere and the noise and all the rest of it. Uh, on your on screen now, we've got Mike West and the Fisher Fury heading up into Pardon. Uh, now we're now into Sport Libra cars. This is Sport Libra under two liter. Uh, under two, we have over and under, so we're under two liter cars here. And uh, this is Class F in your program. Benoit's good at finding the page for this. And Mike's already up to the semicircle. David Bickley and the Radical has just gone off the line. Yes, uh, for everyone here, we are on page uh, 16 of your uh, program. Um, so you'll be uh, going through that. Yes, we cannot stress enough uh, the big thank you that we have to uh, give to the Orange Army uh, here today on the hill and everywhere in the world the rescue teams, obviously the ambulance, everyone that makes those events uh, possible. Uh, David Bickley already going at Pardon and through the straights. It's not so straight, but he'll go through the S's with no problem in this beautiful radical um, chassis that is uh, running a Hayabusa um, four-cylinder bike engine. So not a high uh, state of uh, tuning in the back of that, but it's a very lightweight chassis almost like a Le Mans prototype of 46.69 for David Bickley. Yeah, so an improvement. Mike West did an improvement of a 48.09, so he's proved 8.10. Sam Nicholson, who is currently sitting in third in the practice times, is on the hill with that beautiful Malik Mark 20 Clubman's car, traditional Clubman's car. Uh, many of them on the circuit. And Alan McDonald of the Force SR4. If you've watched the previous years, he used to drive a four-wheel drive Mini. 
He's now got, uh, he just stuck himself in the center and stuck a car around him for this one. Uh, and bought the force. He liked it. He got it. So here we go. He's heading to Pardon now. Yes, uh, this is um, almost like a single C2 is um, a body on it. Um, so it's a little bit wider uh, than the single seater uh, force chassis that we'll see uh, later on um, today, but a very competitive car um, in this class. And it will be a time of 42.70 for Alan McDonald. Martin Watts um, uh, follows him in this silver riot, and this is a very angry car. Um, this is uh, running uh, see, 1000cc four cylinder bike engine um, and he's going through the, uh, straight on here into the entry of the S's into the 90 left um, to go through uh, the second part of his run. It's going so fast it's hard to get the words so out. Must be a riot to watch, a riot to drive right. Uh, so Martin's heading up to the top there looking to improve on his time from earlier 46 45 so he does that puts him ahead of David Bickley actually and Mike Lee and the Force LM, so it looks like a single seater, but it's actually a full body, full width uh, race car with aerodynamics. Another brilliant design from Force Race Cars. Heads up into Pardon right now and carries on out the other side. And then on the start line, I have Richard Matessian in the OMS SC1. Yeah, the catch on the Force LM is that the front wheels are covered, and that's what will be distinguishing it from the single seaters. A uh, very competitive car uh, in this run, and Richard is uh, following this uh, car in the OMS SC1, so uh, fairly um, similar uh, principle and concept from uh, the Force LM as well. Obviously, uh, OMS and Force uh, being mostly uh, manufacturers of single seaters uh, here, but they were building those cars that you could enter in this class, and because they're so lightweight, they are very, very uh, competitive and. Uh, and performing really well. Uh, 44.98 for Mike Lee, um, and then we'll have Richard uh, going through the finish straight. It's a 45.43. Yeah, that's an improvement. Um, if you're hearing the ground shake, that's Bob Penrose. We're into Sport Lever cars over two liter, which is class G. And why is it over two liter? He's got seven liters of American Chevrolet in the back of this thing, all grunt. Um, it's built, it's a combination, the outside paper, uh, I can't remember the pill beam. Uh, it's a combination, underneath is a base single seater chassis, but it's got a carbon fiber tub, and then they stuck the bodywork on top of it. So it's a bit of a thing, always been a hill climb car, always had a big engine in the back. And Duncan Barnes in the Norma M20 FC, which is essentially, uh, you see him big on very, the quickest cars on the European hills, the long hills in Europe. But we've got one here, and this has got a Civic Type R, Honda Civic Type R engine, two liter, turbocharged, putting out about 550 horsepower. Yes, and you can hear it uh, on the hill uh, today. Uh, got the anti leg uh, running at the back, so it will be popping and banging on the overrun. And but this is a very competitive car, as you said, on the European hills and even uh, today. So we'll be looking for the class lead uh, today. And it's, uh, as you said, a Type R 2 liter, and those things uh, can take the boost and the power. It's a 41.74 for Duncan Barnes. Yeah, here's George Harding driving a Ford Escort Mark II the way a Ford Escort Mark II should be driven. Possibly almost sideways, although he's making me a liar at the moment. Um, Bob Penrose did a 51.23. Duncan Barnes has done a 41.74. That puts him on top of the pile in this class. Uh, George is already heading up to the S's. Beautiful, you know, classic lines, but it's got a different engine in the car, so it has to run in Sport Lieber. Graham Lokes in the Lola T492. You can see the Escort sliding everywhere. Porsche powered on the back. Ben? Yes, uh, George in this uh, Escort. Uh, this is the Cosworth Turbo uh, engine running in this car, so a lot of power, but Graham Loke in this beautiful Lola T492. This car is built uh, from last year, and he decided, well, I have a Porsche 911 in the garage. Why don't I take the engine out and put it in this beautiful um, single uh, prototype? And uh, Graham is such a lovely bloke, he'll be running a 45.44. Yeah, uh, puts him second in the class. Next up, it's like, what do you do if you have a rally a couple of weeks away and you want to test your car? You bring it to a hill climb. This is a full spec Skoda Fabia R5 rally car. The same ones you see in Europe. 
And uh, this is Roger Moran, and he is running in Sports Libra over to leader because, well, the engine's turbocharged and the rear suspension is not as it was originally designed. It never came with four-wheel drive, so it goes to Sports Libra. But he's chucking it up the hill, and then we got Mike Luckin of Salt GT, only 12 made. He's on the hill. Should be with you shortly. Rob, uh, Roger's done a 4564. That's very quick for that. Yes, a uh, very quick time for uh, Roger Moran, uh, Dad of Scott, who will be uh, currently second in the championship. But Mike Loke in this uh, beautiful Zolf GT, and this is running a 2.3 litre from uh, Ford, uh, quite a high state of tune, about 240 horsepower. And it's mated to a Mazda MX-5 gearbox and obviously being real wheel drive. And it's a beautiful car, one of my favorite car in this class uh, today on the hill. It'll be a time of 49.19 for Mike Luke. Yeah, that's a good time. Yeah, they only made, ever made 12 of the Zolf GTs and they were just a, such a cool looking car. John McQuillan exited part in a rather rather wide and ugly but uh, he got it around and he's carrying on in the Kawasaki powered uh, Fisher Fury and I got Ben Hamer that's just launched off the line now we're getting into the 1100 class and we've got a lot of them so Ben Hamer in the OMS 28 he's already out heading up to pardon and uh, just John McQuillan I'm just trying to get him through the board yeah 4970 for the Fisher Fury Ben Hamer's already destined Ben Yes, uh, Ben, uh, tremendous pace uh, today on this in this car. Uh, it's been running so well uh, so far in practice this morning. And uh, no problems through a bit of uh, smoke on the entry of uh, the semicircle, but no problem. We're going into the single seater now, so uh, most of them will be running bike engine. Um, and then there will be a very um, cost efficient way of getting into uh, some of the quick cars that you'll see today on the hill. Yeah, uh, so Ben did his 4165. I will say Ben is the only turbocharged car in this class, and the reason for that is it's only 748 cc's. So with the conversion factor, it still fits in. On your screen is Richard Weaver heading across the line. He's moved up a few positions in practice, a 4176. Uh, ben stayed the same, roughly about eighth overall. Steve Morgan's on your screen right now. This is a double driven car, Sun Top drives the car, Will. Uh, Steve is currently sitting somewhere about 15th. We've got 22 cars in this class. This is race cars up to 1,100 cc's. And on the line is Richard Summers, Alex Summers' dad, in the family DJ Firehawk. Yes, this will be page 21 in your uh, program. Uh, quite a big entry list. Uh, this is such a popular um, class here in the British Hill Climb uh, Championship. And those cars are no uh, slouch. Whilst they might have just a thousand cc, uh, those bike engines probably produce between 100 and up to 200 horsepower in those cars. And obviously, being single seaters, they have all the area that you need to go as quick as possible through the corners. Yeah, uh, let's see how we do. Richard's already coming up to the S's. Dylan Flesher in their OMS he shares his car with his brother. Uh, OMS 28. This car was uh, slightly tweaked at Chelsea at, uh, three weeks ago. Four weeks. Three, uh, three weeks ago. And they actually had to put a new tub on the front of it. So uh, shout out to Steve Owen and OMS Cars for getting these guys back on the track. They were back at Lowton last weekend. And Tony Bonfield in the Jedi Mark IV is just on the line right now. Uh, Richard Summers has done a 4.081. That jumps him up to fifth in practice. Yeah, great time from uh, Richard uh, in this class. And then uh, quickly followed by uh, Dylan Flesher, 39.87. So uh, the first uh, of the uh, 40, under 40 second run um, today. But those times will. Um, go down as we go up the classes. We've got Tony Bunfield here uh, on the hill running uh, the uh, Jedi in this car. This is an also bike engine car uh, today running a very small chassis, very uh, short uh, wheelbase, making very agile through the different corners of the hill today. Yeah, Jedi, Jedi cars has made a lot of these. That's only a Mark IV, but I think they're up to about Mark. Uh, I know there's a Mark VI, and I know there's a Mark VIII, so I'm not quite sure how far they're going. But they're still in business. They do a lot of single-seater racing, actual circuit racing, but they're a popular little car in the hills with small engines. He's done uh, 45 14. Richard Walker in the OMS CFO 4 uh, is somewhere on the hill. And Richard Brandt, who always drives 110% in his Force PT, used to run a Clio, 
still think he drives his car like he's driving the Clio, but off he goes, coming around the door, he's headed to party. Yeah, Richard Brunt, uh, 88 miles an hour under the bridge uh, in the first part uh, of the uh, start line. And yeah, Richard always makes it to, uh, to the highlights. Um, always having moments. I hope he doesn't have uh, today. I'm not wishing this uh, to any driver today, but he drives beautifully disguised. His first season into a single seater, so he's still getting up to grip um, with the car, and I'm sure he'll be uh, posting a great time. Uh, it's a 40.65. 4065, that actually puts him up to fifth. Pushed Richard Summers down to sixth. Um, I'm just having a look here. So I got Nigel Pitt on on, uh, on camera, on screen, on track, in front of everybody, heading up in the pardon right now. Uh, this is a, 20, uh, a 2022 year chassis, OMS 3000. And Nigel wants, in his highlight on his, uh, in his commentator sheet, it says, I hate rain. And he's just got it in big capital letters. Um, there's a long story behind that. And Mark Schlenker's on the start line. Nigel's heading across the line. Sorry, Ben, I'll just take that away from you. Uh, 40 .42 puts him up in third place. And you've got Mark Schlenker with you. I saw we were not supposed to use uh, one of those R <laughs> word. Uh, it's all fine. We are going Mark Schlenker. Yes, this beautiful uh, gold, uh, Livery yellow gold uh, through uh, Pardon already. This is a tricky corner. Uh, because it tightens uh, as uh, it gets. So you want to get the car straight so that you can have as much speed through uh, the straight bit. It's not so straight really. I walked the track yesterday and it's already through semicircle, a tricky corner. He's going to try and carry as much speed into that corner and then squeeze the throttle through the finish line. It's a 4121. Great. Does that mean because I was supporting a competitor, I used that R word? Am I mean, am I buying the beverages today? The Graham Williams is in front of you at the OMS 2000M. Uh, we do have a bet between ourselves that we're not allowed to say two, two R words this afternoon. It looks like I just threw that one away. But I'll buy the first round, so let's see who gets the second round. Anyway, Graham's already in the S's to you. And I've got Emma Rayson and the Empire Evo launching off the line. We'll be with you in a minute. Uh, Graham already in the second part of uh, his run. Uh, tremendous um, pace um, so far still in in this car, but um, Amy Race in uh, 71 miles an hour in one of the uh, beautiful uh, empires um, with another bike engine uh, spark coming out of the back of that car as the car went uh, through the bit between uh, Etoris and Pardon already through the S's and exiting uh, the left. And uh, Emma posted uh, 42.02 uh, earlier this morning, already through semicircle. Squeeze the throttles through the finish line, and it's a 42.35. Yeah, that's not a bad time. Puts, uh, where are we, 42, 35, somewhere, yeah. Not as quick as their second practice time, so a little bit slower. Uh, James Moore in the Empire Evo is coming through the S's now. Stuart Bickley has just launched his fourth TA off the line. You'll see him coming into view in a minute. James is exiting the effort. Stuart with you. Yeah, you can't miss it. Uh, so uh, if you're a photographer, make sure you adjust your lens because uh, you, this this is quite a bright car. But Strut has been uh, going absolutely flying in this class. Uh, I think he's snatched a few class records this season. Um, a very uh, great driver uh, going through this. And he'll be looking to improve um, so far. He posted a 40.83 uh, earlier this morning and a 39.49 uh, pulling just yeah. second in class. Yeah, pushed him up to second by eight one hundredths. In fairness, he lost a little bit in the S's. He was up everywhere else, just lost a bit in the S's. Uh, Gavin McLaren just heading through Pardon now, heading out the top there and up towards the S's. And Dave Tatum, who's currently the quickest in this class, is going to need to go quicker, I think. So let's see what he does. And this is only practice, folks. Well, Dave Tatum, 96 miles an hour under the bridge. Um, so a lot of friends in this car. Um, this is the DJ Firehawk, so one of the DJs here that we have today on the hill. This is one of the most competitive chassis in this class. And um, he's going, he's flying a 44.36 midway, 27.74 um, exiting the S's. This is going to be a very, very good time. Yeah, I, I think he's going to improve on his time. He goes over the line with a 38.28. That's like 1.2 seconds quicker than he was. Uh, absolutely flying it. We've got Robin Nicholson stepping out of class here for a minute. We've got Robin Nicholson in a Sport Libra up to 
seven-seater car. Shares it with his, uh, I believe, brother uh, in the Malik Mark 20. Currently sitting second in class. Alan McDonald is leading the class, but only by about a second and a half. So can Robin make time up here? He's a little bit down coming into the S's. And then I've got an over two liter Libra car, double driven car. It's a great thing about hill climbing. Two people can share the same car and compete on the same weekend. Robin Penrose has just launched off the line, but Robin Nicholson in the Malik is headed across with a 45 41. He's actually gone slower. Robin Penrose in the seven liter Chevy, drumbling, uh, grumbling, grump. Anyway, it's to you. Yes, uh, Robin was going real well, and uh, Robert it was a little bit wider through its race. I hope the engine hasn't cut off. He's just um, making slow progress. Um, Don't in, say in it. Run, Don't say it. Looks like he's fired the engine again, so uh, he's all good, and hopefully we'll be running. But it looks like the car has just stopped now, so. Uh, I think we'll probably have to come to a stop, so I don't know who you had on the line. Oh, it looks like he's fired the engine back up again. So, uh, great thing. He'll be uh, disappointed with this run, but great to have for him. Yeah, it looks like a technical problem. Um, the the organizers, the marshals, and the, uh, the, the, the chief of the chief of the thingy, because the car's hit and miss, they've shut the track down behind to uh, make sure that, yeah, there's no issues. Uh, like, Robert's got the car going, some sort of Allen engine mal malady, and he's got to cross the line anyway, so he's clear of the track. And, uh, right, so uh, we're resetting, and our bet is still on, folks, if you're wondering why we're not saying certain words, dear. Um, and on the line, we've got Will Kerr in the OMS 28. Will is currently about six quickest, but he needs to find a couple of seconds here. So he's off the line, popping the banging. Launches up the wiggle waggle under the bridge at 87 miles an hour around Orchard and to you. Yeah, this internal was speed in that first uh, part of the run for uh, Will. He posted a 40.59, so we'll be looking to improve um, on this run. He's already beautifully through uh, Pardon, uh, Great, carried the speed through and he's gonna go through up the gears, through the asses. Try to not go uh, too wide into those corners. There's some very aggressive curb that doesn't suit the uh, single seaters very well. Already through semicircle, up through the gears, through the finish line, and that's a 39.50. Yeah, that's a good time. That's more like it. Only one 100 behind Stuart Pickley. Uh, now we're getting close. Tom Weaver, uh, young Tom Weaver, uh, younger than me anyway. Empire Evo, it's only 20. Uh, it's an ongoing joke because I got his age wrong last week. And he's actually purple sectors up on the first two sections. Um, he's making a run for this year. A little bit down at midway. Uh, Jonathan Flesher's on the line. Shares the car with Dylan. So we've already seen Dylan Flesher. He's fourth right now. But Jonathan launched off. But Tom Weaver's already heading around semicircle, Ben. Yes, uh, Tom uh, will be heading, I think, um, in a 39.74 through the finish line. A great time for him. He'll be looking to improve on this. Um, I've heard we might be having force practice run uh, this afternoon if everything goes well, so he might have a nose ago uh, later today. Well, let's hear for the commentator's curse on that one. Right, Jonathan Flesher's up, pardon, and the rebuild OMS. Uh, they're blindingly quick. Dylan's sitting in about fifth with a 39.8. He's the co-driver on this. Jonathan's only a ninth, but I uh, don't know whether he can make up some time. And young Tom Morgan, son of Steve, is on the hill in the family Empire Evo 3. Yes, uh, John Flesher is through the finish line of 40.33, but um, the uh, Empire Evo 3, this is one of the latest evolution uh, from the Empire Garage. Um, the car that is super competitive. This is a full carbon um, tub chassis. And, and some big aero and a lot of developments uh, on this car uh, going through. He's already through uh, the entry of semicircle, will be up through the gears, but Debbie Summers in the DJ Firehook uh, follows him very quickly. Debbie has been campaigning uh, this car for a while, and uh, this weekend um, she would be usually driving the Summers cars, we can call it like this, the P40, but Alex has jumped in this car uh, for uh, the last two rounds of uh, the British Hill Climbs uh, as they sort uh, the Firestorm. Uh, but Debbie is one of the quickest ladies drivers on the hill and she'll be probably claiming uh, this title again today. 40.02. Yeah, that moves her up to six uh, in class. That's uh, basically uh, everything in front of her is in the 39. 
Uh, ben Bonfield is on the track, the Jedi Mark IV. Um, little, little car in this class compared to some of the other cars. Um, Jedi's done a lot of development, but this one's one of the older ones, but still a very capable and a very reasonable price way of getting into single-seater hill climbing. And Kristen Dodd's on the line with the Formula Ford. Ben Bonfield's done a 42.5. That's a second improvement on his times. So in that class, David Tatham is leading Stuart Bickle in Will Care after three practice runs. And now we're into J1 uh, in your program. Ben will get you the page in a second. And we've got Chris Kirsten Dodd on the course. It shares this car with Caroline Ryder. Uh, this is the Van Diemen RF86. Sarah Bosworth is currently is holding the fastest practice time so far. And she heads into Pardon. And Carol Nichols in her dad's design and build Nike Mark IV. Is, uh, it's an older Formula Ford, but it's still a Formula Ford in this class, Ben. Yes, uh, up to page 22 in your program if you're uh, here uh, watching the action uh, live here. Um, so yeah, a lot of these classic Formula Ford cars, uh, they're all running uh, with spec tires and uh, quite a simple four-cylinder uh, Ford engine at the back. Uh, some of those cars, uh, like you see uh, on the hill, driven by Carroll, are quite uh, a little bit older from the late uh, early 80s, late 70s. Um, but one of the few cars that you'll see here on the Van Diemen's are from the late 80s and early 90s cars. And it's a very competitive class. There's always a tense or two between all of those drivers. Yeah, uh, we're talking 60s, late 60s here on these cars, on um, Carol's car, and I think we're at the fringes. It's also late 60s. Uh, so Kirsten did a 5075. Carol's done a 5633. So both improved on their, they're getting quicker in their practice times. Charlie Riley in a Van Diemen R92 is up the hill towards you. Left Buck in the fringes Mistral, which is an older style uh, Formula Ford. Um, is coming through Pardon and heading up your way. Yes, uh, Charlie just posted a 50.04 in the Van Diemen R92, but Les Buck uh, quickly um, follows him in this beautiful Pringet Mistral. And well, those cars are uh, where the Academy car, so if you wanted to get into single seaters, well, you'd have to probably go through the Formula Ford um, series and probably make a season or two. And if you're really quick in those cars, then you're probably really quick uh, in anything. Uh, young Tom Weaver and Alex Coles have been uh, tussling and having great battles in this class previously and they've now moved up um, to the class that we've just seen uh, previously. Right, so Rob Markham in the Maryland is up the hill somewhere. Sarah Bosworth has come to a stop. The marshals have requested a stop. They're going to check on a mechanical. Um, so uh, we'll just hang tight here for a minute. So we'll take a deep breath here for a second and gather ourselves up. Um, so if you're just joining us, this is welcome to, on behalf of the Bugatti Owners Club, welcome to Prescott Hill Climb. If you are new to hill climbing, uh, we'll try to fill you in a little bit and, and guide you a little bit. And if you're experienced hill climbing, an enthusiast, uh, welcome. Um, we are in uh, sunny Gloucestershire, and you'll see um, uh, there's nothing going on there. We've got the other car just stopped at the top. You can see the marshal next to it. Uh, that's Paul Mork uh, Morkum, and he's uh, there just stopped talking to him too. So some sort of technical hitch. So we're in a just a sort of a hold pattern. Um, yeah. Uh, just a couple of shout outs I will do quickly, Ben. Uh, one is uh, to all the marshals, the rescue guys, the volunteers behind the scenes and everything. Thank you for doing what you're doing. The racers appreciate it. The commentators appreciate it. The spectators appreciate it because without you guys, we can't do any of that. Um, also, if you're watching on Hill Climb TV, if you haven't already, like, share, follow, and please, if you haven't, would you be so kind and subscribe? It won't cost you anything. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. And so if you're watching today and you're enjoying the coverage and everything, give us a hand. So like, share, follow, whatever the other words are, but hit the subscribe button at the end. Uh, ben? Yes, um, great. So that we have 
live coverage. And um, yeah, if, you, if you're today on the hill and uh, you've made uh, your way to Prescott, then if you want to catch uh, all of the action when you come back home, if you haven't had enough of your day, uh, you can uh, watch it again. If you're watching live from wherever you are in the world, uh, thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, we always appreciate it. And uh, we take, we like to say we take pride in what we, we do. So hope you enjoyed the day. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'll be following on the chat. Um, we'll uh, use those down times to, to go through them as well. I know um, the great Richard uh, behind the live stream will also be uh, answering some of them. But if you have any questions, you don't know what uh, is running or anything, um, make sure that you, you ask those questions. Uh, we like to have an interactive um, running uh, throughout this weekend we do that sir we do that yeah we had i had we had a viewer from canada in my neighborhood uh, last weekend um and before we get the questions on why there's an american because for every single stream uh, i'm actually got a canadian accent but i was born here raised grew up here lived in canada got the accent came back 25 years and i've been racing for 40 years um and I can talk a lot, so it kind of so seems to work out. And uh, I'm a competitor myself, so um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you don't mind the accent. But yes, we're, stu we're doing the British Hill Climb Championship in the middle of Gloucestershire, and you're listening to a Canadian accent and a French accent um, on your live stream, and I'm hoping you're enjoying it. We'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our live stream partner for today's British Hill Climb Championship and Cup meeting, Footman James. BHC Cup main sponsors Footman James have been at the heart of the classic vehicle movement for over 35 years and provide specialist classic vehicle insurance cover to owners, collectors, restorers and traders. Their classic car and classic bike insurance policies come with show and events cover as standard. Plus, you could tailor your policy to suit your needs with their flexible FJ Plus options. These options have everything from agreed value to track day cover. To find out more, please visit www.footmanjames.co.uk. Well, I think um, the incident has cleared, um, so the flags are going down, so we'll be back up and running uh, with the action very shortly. Yeah, are we still we're still holding off on the not mentioning the R words. We've got a bit of a bit of a bit of a bet going on. I, I mentioned w there's two R words. One of them, um, because if you were following last weekend, uh, I was commentating last weekend with Chris Ponsford, who is here with us, but he's uh, he's on paddock patrol, getting us all the latest gossip for tomorrow. Um, if you know last weekend, there were two R words that were driving us nuts for one reason or another. So we've got a bet going on. I mentioned one once in, in regards to a driver's preference of surfaces. Um, so I don't know if Ben's going to hold me to that, but there is a beverage riding on who, who actually slips first proper here. So if you don't hear us saying a couple of, R, a couple of different words starting with R and describing what's going on, that's why. Right, Neil Coles is on the line, Ben. We've got, uh, is in his OMS 28. We're jumping classes. We're heading up to class. What class are we at? We're class J2, racing cars, 1100 to 1600 cc. And off the line he goes. This is an OMS 28 with a 5085 cc engine in the back of it. Yes, uh, Neil Cole's uh, sharing with his uh, son, Alex, uh, today. And uh, the, one of the beautiful OMS 28. So the class is up to 1600 is still Mostly bike powered cars, um, but those car, those engines are usually uh, built and stroked up, so a little bit more capacity than uh, what you would find. Many of those um, cars will be running high boost engines, so 1340 um, engine, but they all would try to get as close as possible to the limit of that class, um, so running uh, a 1600 or 1585. Yeah, uh, I think we've got a 1440 motorcycle engine, about the biggest. The rest of them are more the traditional car engines in the back of the thing. Uh, Liam Cooper shares his car with wife uh, uh, Livia Cooper, or sister. I may have just married him by accident. Um, <laughs> on the hill, uh, Neil Coles did a 4142, so four tenths quicker, but uh, still more or less in 11th place. Liam's heading across the line with a 39.98. That jumps him up to fourth quickest. Really nice tidy time. We've got Paul Morkum re-running. This is the Formula Ford. 
Uh, Merlin, Mark 11A, he got stopped in that uh, uh, technical issue at the last run. And then Sarah Bosworth is just launching off the line in her Formula Ford. Yeah, Paul already uh, passed uh, the uh, pardon and through the S's um, already in this beautiful Formula Ford. Um, but I can hear Sarah Bosworth um, following her and uh, she's been running uh, this car for a uh, few seasons now and uh, Sarah has been uh, previously uh, campaigning a single Lutis Elise. Um, yeah, she's, she's actually the, the record holder in a road going class in her Lotus Elise. She still has it, this is her second season in the Van Diemen. Uh, shares it with um, Lindsay Summers sometimes. Uh, they're both involved in this, she'll sometimes jump in this car when the big car's not available. Paul Jones and Empire Evo just launched on a line and heading through its stories. And yeah. Yeah, Paul Jones uh, not running as quick as I would expect. Uh, maybe a technical issue on the car, uh, but he's still making uh, progress um, through his run. I can hear some rev, so uh, the engine must be running, but maybe something uh, on the dash uh, making him slow down. Uh, nonetheless, we've got Alan Warburton, uh, one of the two Warburtons today, in the hill, on the hill. This is a Gold GR59, so this is the top spec car. This is a full carbon chassis from the front to the back, and then running this beautiful uh, bike engine at the back. This is sequential gearbox, all of the gizmos, uh, traction control, uh, launch control from the line, and it, Alan is uh, a quick driver uh, in this car. Yeah, uh, shares the car with son David, who actually gets into the top 10 in the British runoffs with this car. Um, yeah, Sarah Bosler did a 48-40. That put her four 100s quicker, uh, a few 100s quicker than her second practice, but just a hair quicker. You see Andy Short in the OMS CFO 7 Suzuki heading up, uh, heading up the hill through Pardon. Alan Warburton's just done a 38-5, so he's knocked another second off his time in the practice. Uh, so Andy Short's uh, coming through you there, and Darren Gumley, who battled, uh, had basically clutch failure and didn't run last weekend, is just left the line. Yeah, Andy Short, uh, just a 40.49 um, on this run, uh, but Darren Gumbly, uh, 94 miles an hour under the bridge, great start, 2.8 second at the 64 feet so far, a little bit of a looks like it couldn't find the right gear coming out of uh, Etoris, but no problem on the second part. And he's already passed Pardon through the straight, already through the S's. He'll try to straighten them as much as possible into the tricky left-hander. Yeah, Darren Gumbley is already coming out of the S's, heading for semicircle. Gary Hill in the OMS 2000M is just launched off the line, 87 miles an hour, just heading into Etoris. Darren Gumbley's on a 4.0.04. .04. Well, that's a bit better, but uh, still we got cars in the 39s, 38s, and 37s in front of them. Yeah, Gary, I'll, um, already passed Pardon. Um, looks like I couldn't find the right gear um, coming out of that corner, but um, managed to put a gear that would uh, power him through the second part of his run. It looks like he's made good progress and uh, gathered it together. A 39.83, so just under the 40 second mark for Gary. Yeah, that's good. Moves him up to fourth in the class. Back to the Formula Fords for a minute. Caroline Ryder. Uh, Sarah Bother is still the quicker. Caroline's probably going, no, hang on a second, I'm not happy about this. So she's going to try and, uh, you know, set out the stall for tomorrow, if you will. It's a saying going on. Heading up to Pardon now, out the other side. And then we'll switch back to the bigger car class. I've got John Stockley and a fourth PC on the line. Uh, to you. Yeah, the ladies competition uh, in this clan between uh, Caroline and Sarah. Uh, 48.72 for Caroline Ryder in a uh, previous run. Let's see what she can do. She's going through the finish straight to 48.64, so she does improve, but that's just uh, second in the class. Quickly followed um, by John Stockley. This is a carries a key four cylinder engine with a turbo strapped on the side, so uh, that's why it's running in this uh, up to 1600 um, uh, category. And uh, it's a very, it's the first season um, with this car. He was telling me earlier this morning that um, it's actually a very linear power uh, from uh, that turbocharged engine. It's 
Yeah, moves him up to 12th in practice. On the line, I've got Robert Capper and the Empire Wraith. So the Empire Distinctive, it's got a uh, wider side pod with lower slung, and they are curved more aerodynamic. You can see the flow in your pictures now if you're watching online. Yeah, what a wonderful car. This is probably one of the most advanced cars uh, today on the hill. Uh, this is... Uh, been designed by F1 designers and uses uh, quite a lot of aero uh, under the car. Um, so two big venturi uh, on the side of the car, very similar to uh, the F1 concept uh, that we have um, today. And that gives you a lot of downforce um, through those corners. And um, I've been told that in this car is about from 40 miles an hour. Um, so very um, low uh, level of speed to produce the downforce. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, Robert did a 39.92 in that car. Moved him up to fifth in class, fifth in the overall. Steven Potter's launched off the line. Launch control, traction control. That's what you hear all that popping and banging. Try and keep the wheels from uh, spinning too much. Keeps the engine going. Sorry, that was Adam Greenan that just launched off the line. The Empire Evo 3. Uh, he's already to you. And Sir Potter did a 4.0.01. Uh, moved up to seventh. Yeah, Adam Green and uh, making tremendous progress um, through the S's and into semicircle already. A great turn of speed. Looking at the splits, is uh, going real well. It'll be probably just under the 40 second mark, 39.63 for Adam. Yeah, good time. Moves him up to fourth in the pile. Um, right, we're just okay, bear with us for a second. Uh, we've got, should be car number 830. That is Andrew Coburn in the Van Diemen RF02FX. And this is a two liter in the back, normally aspirated, so no turbos, no superchargers, it's all engine. Uh, very quick car. I believe it was a, a former Formula Ireland car, one make championship, I believe. I'm relying on my bad memory from last week on this. But anyway, uh, so far today, um, so this car is shared by Andrew and uh, Aaron. They share the car, so both initials are A, which completely confuses the heck out of you when you're looking at the timing screen. But we'll try to sort it out. So Andrew's on the track, already heading for part. And I've got Nicola Dearden in the Dallara F394 going away with no side pods. Yes, sir. Uh, Andrew's through the second part already of the hill uh, in this beautiful uh, Van Diemen. Uh, this car is probably a little bit down on power compared to the other car in this uh, Canterbury. We've now moved to uh, class uh, K1, so this is page 24 of um, your program. Um, but it's quickly followed by Nicola Durden, um, who's uh, campaigning this beautiful Dallara F394. This is an X um, F3 uh, chassis uh, car, so used to spend uh, most of its time on circuits, but. For hill climb, they've just decided, well, we don't really need much radiator and cooling because it's a very short run. So they've ditched the very distinctive um, side pods of the Dallaros that we used to. And uh, it's a very beautiful, clean shape all the way through. It's a 49.94 for Nicola Durden. Yeah, you've got on screen, you've got Kevin Creven in the Pilbeam MP88. Um, let's see how he's doing. Currently about 10 for the 45. Looking to improve on that. And Trish Davis launches off the line in the Family Force TA with husband Terry's own design engine in the back, which is also in the back of Johnson Farley's Predator. Uh, and Keith has done a 43.38. Trish is just coming through towards part to you. Yeah, what a beautiful engine. Very smooth engine uh, going through. And this is um, the, a new chassis for um, the Davis uh, this uh, season. Uh, they bolted their own engine at the back and uh, producing some great power and uh, very reliable engines as well. Um, they've been campaigned for a few years now. They produce, they make it some, for some uh, affordable way of running those cars. It's a 42.31 for Trish. Yeah, she uh, jumped up a little bit, six, uh, sitting six in the practice. Now, Einan Price set a time in the second practice and Jonathan Barley got close, but he set the pace. He is the pace setter in practice. He's launched off the line now, heading up towards under the bridge. 99 miles an hour through Orchard. 
in the air. Comes into you. Already through that uh, beautiful uh, run through. Uh, Enter is not ready through pardon. Turns the car beautifully, rotates the car very quickly. Up the gears through. The S is now no problems through that run. It'll be a very competitive time. 27.5 into the S is, um, is uh, very good. It will be looking to um, improve on his time. A 38.39 on his previous run. A 38.52. Actually lost a couple of, uh, couple of, lost a couple of tenths there. That's a bit weird. Uh, Richard Spedding, if you're watching last week's coverage, he was driving Alex Summers' uh, AP4. Uh, sorry, the A. Hang on. AFS. Alex Summers own design car uh, because the engine in his car has gone kaput. This week, uh, Jonathan Varley has kindly let him drop in uh, his car. So now Richard's driving like the third car in a different thingy. GWR Predator. He's got the two liter V8 in the back. Terry Davis built design engine. And uh, very quick little car. This Richard's just only driven it this weekend and he's up like fourth fastest in the class so far in practice and then we got young Alex Coles on the line who last year was setting records in a Formula Ford this year they gave him something bigger to play with and uh, yeah he's getting the grips with it yes a uh, beautiful run so far for Richard uh, almost over rotated uh, the car uh, going through uh, pardon but no problem he's already through the finish line it's 39.57 for Richard Spedding yeah that's almost a second quicker so Richard's getting comfortable on that thing jumps him up to third right we're just switching classes this is Alex Coles we've got double driven cars that's why you'll see the car and we haven't quite finished we've got to switch drivers in the cars in the paddock get the car cooled down as well it's going back to back to get a little warm and we are quite the weather here is a bit a bit overcast but it's a little muggy it's a bit thick in the air so that's going to affect the air density and the power in the cars a little bit swings it around that lovely exit going around part literally swung the car around on the exit and he's already coming up the s's to you yes 96 miles an hour under the bridge uh, early on the, on this run is already through uh semicircle he posted a 39.53 um, on his uh, previous run, a 38.97, almost five tenths uh, quicker in this third uh, practice run. Meanwhile, we've got Olivia uh, uh, following uh, Alex. Uh, Olivia is always a very quick driver in this beautiful Force TA. 97 miles an hour uh, under the bridge, 28.5 um, through the S's. Let's see what she can do in the uh, later part of her run. A 39.05, very close to the time that Alex has just posted. Just to, goes to show how competitive this is uh, as a class. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm back here. Sorry about that. Uh, quite busy down here in the sauna. Uh, Rob Anscombe is already come to you, coming through the S's and the Empire Evo. And then this is the one to watch. David Warburton has just launched off the line in the cool GR59. Only a 1600cc engine in this thing, or slightly less. Uh, set the pace this morning. He's got a number nine on the side of the car. That means he was regularly scoring top 10 points last year. Uh, he's in the top, he regularly gets to the top 12 runoff with this little car. Sort of a David versus Goliath job. And he's up on his own time right now. And Ian Tucker in an OMS 28 has just launched off the line as well. Ben? Yeah, over 100 miles an hour under the bridge. 102 miles an hour for David Warburton. A 36.85 for him. So almost uh, four tenths quicker than his previous practice run this morning. Um, Ian Tucker uh, quickly follows uh, him in this car. We are now up to uh, class uh, K1. Uh, so back to uh, page 24 on your program. Ian Tucker is campaigning this beautiful OMS uh, 28, so one of the very many OMS that we are going to see today. They've built near close to 300 cars um, so far uh, at OMS, so uh, they probably take a lot of pride in their work. A 43.63 for Ian Tucker. Yeah, that's a good time. Keeps it floating around, uh, what's that, 10th quickest right now. This is 60 to 2 liter. Einan Price is still holding, holding uh, holding class or course or whatever you want to call it i'm really running out of words here simon barnwell's on the line in the formula renault tatus 2000 x 
circuit car. It used to be a one make series, the Formula Renault series. Uh, there was a spec chassis. Um, lots of them lying around. Very common. They actually do a Formula Renault class in France on the hills. Uh, specifically for Formula Renault cars, so X circuit cars. So um, they are used to this. Not as tight and twisty in France. I don't believe the hill climbs are. But uh, anyway, up to Pardon they go and heading up across Yeses. And then I've got car 843 rolling up in front of me. This is Clive Austin in the Empire Wraith. Yes, uh, Simon um, in this uh, Formula Renault uh, built by Tatus in Italy. And this is running um, the F. For our Renault engine, so the two-liter engine that you would find in the um, Renault Clio's, uh, probably about putting about 200 horsepower in this car. It's a um, 40. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, the Formula Renaults they didn't high horsepower them. They built them. They were all built equal because it was a one a one make type thing. So they didn't go more than like 200 or 200 a little bit, but all the cars had the same horsepower. So they weren't stressed in the engine department. They went for reliability to put on a good racing show. Uh, so it was like one make championship, essentially. Uh, Clive Austin in the Orange Empire race should be up with you somewhere. And I've got John Chalmers in the Rolf 302 001, ready to go. Yeah, great to see uh, Clive uh, back up on the hills um, today. He's uh, been, uh, not been racing so far this year, he's had his uh, car uh, being rebuilt, but today he's borrowing um, another car, it's a 42.96 uh, for him, so almost a second quicker than his previous run uh, earlier this morning, so a great uh, time for him. We're moving up to class K2, so racing cars up to 2 litre. Uh, with forced induction, so you're going to hear all sort of noises. And uh, John Chalmers here on the hill, just exiting uh, Pardon, is running one of those, and you can hear the anti lag, the pop and bangs coming out of the uh, exhaust. That makes sure that the turbo is still spooled up, and they will be feeding more air to the engine, more air, more fuel, more power, quicker cars. It makes your car go fly the finish line of 40.09. Turbo! Right, Pete Tatum off the line in the OMS 28. He's second quickest right now. Paul Hames is leading the class in practice. Um, very quick. Thought of eating a burger lunchtime, so I don't know if that's going to cost him a tenth or two. Um, I tried to avoid it the entire time he was eating it, but I ended up defaulting in the end. So if, if anybody that's listening is going to get me in trouble with the my trainer later this week. Well, I just did it. Right, Pete's already through the S's coming out inside. I got Kelvin Broad on the fourth TA on the line. Ben? Yeah, Pete's uh, going uh, very well uh, so far in this run. It's going to be a 39.09, so just about very close to his uh, previous time, a 38.93 earlier this morning. Uh, Kelvin Broad just uh, left the line at 2.1 of the 64, 91 miles an hour uh, under the bridge. This is, uh, I think this is one of the um, supercharged engines in this um, category. Some will be running supercharged, some will be running a turbo. Beautifully turned through Pardon, all the way through uh, the straights, into the S's, trying to carry as much speed, a little bit of the brake onto the left-hander, more power into semicircle, carry the speed, try to make it as tight as possible through the finish straight and that's a 39.75. Yeah, that yeah, puts about fourth in class. Pete Tatum's 39.09 was actually uh, tenth and a half slower than his second practice time. He was in the 38s before. Now Paul Hames did a 37.2 in second practice. Is he going to do more? Number eight in the championship last year. Has been uh, qualifying in the, in the top 12 with the smaller engine with the big hair dryer on the side of it all the way through a Torres and heading up towards Pardon. Yeah, you call this a hairdryer, you call this a big snail. Uh, but this is a very competitive car, the GR59. This is obviously the top spec car, the car that you probably want to run um, at this uh, time. 26.31 uh, coming out of the S's, 31 seconds off semi-circles. This is going to be a cracking time. This is a 36.48. Yeah, 36.48, that's another eight tenths quicker. The rest of the group just went, uh, where am I going to find two plus seconds? And Aaron Colbert in the Van Diemen RFO2 FX shares that with Andrew Colbert. Um, and I have no idea on your time screen. Oh, okay, I think I worked it out. 
Aaron is already gone. Aaron's on the hill, so that ought to work out the timing. Aaron's slightly quicker than Andrew. And then Andrew Hansen with the Delara F394, the shared car with the no side pods. Off they go. Yes, sir. I don't know if you have the uh, class record um, on the screen, um, Owen, but this is the 38.48. Posted by Paul Hanks in the GR59 is about four tenths um, of uh, Richard Spedding. Uh, class record is 36.08. Uh, but Andrew Henson already going through uh, the uh, Harden and exiting this. He's been campaigning this car, probably a little bit down on power compared to the Elsa car, but beautifully uh, turned out and beautifully driven by Andrew. He's been posting some really good competitive time in this beautiful car. Um, it'll be a time. Going through the finish line of 40.43 for Andrew. Yeah, fifth quickest in the class practice so far, but uh, uh, Einan Price, this is the K1 class, up to two liter normally aspirated. So we're picking up the cars we left out before. We've got uh, Jonathan Evans in the Pillbeam MP88 on the hill, who's uh, the uh, previous best of the 46.2. He's looking to improve on that. And then Terry Davis in his V8. He's fourth. He's sitting fourth in practice. Jonathan Evans has done a 44-3-4 to uh, jump up a couple places. Terry's with you now, and I've got our 136 on the line, and that's just Jonathan Varley ready to go. Yeah, Terry uh, already organizing pardon through the finish, through the straight, sorry, and into the S's. Uh, he'll be looking to get under the 40 seconds uh, today, I'm sure. Looking at the splits, he'll get under that time, a 33.99 coming out of semi-circle through the finish line, and a 42.24. Yeah, that's uh, another tenth quicker, but still keeps him around fourth. But Jonathan Varley, uh, he's literally, they're with Einan Price and John Varley, the only two cars in the 38. So Jonathan's going to be looking around to see if he can find a 38. A better 38. Sandra Tomlin's on the line in her, she owns it, 2013 uh, spec Pillbeam MP97. And it didn't want to go off the line. Yes, uh, Jonathan Varley uh, is the record order in this class here at Prescott at 37.55 for reference. And he just posted a 38.29 and Jonathan's been running real well, uh, posted um, class record times uh, last weekend at Lawson Park and he's um, tied up with a number of uh, competitors in the British Hill Climb Cup so he'll be looking to have the best weekend possible but quickly followed by Sandra Tomlin uh, a regular competitor for many years um, and uh, competitions runs through the family you'll see Oliver her son uh, running the car later this is uh, one of the appeal beam with a 4 litre V8 uh, jet at the back, about 600 horsepower, 48.69 for Sandra. Yeah, the car actually, she got launched away just about the 64 foot time, the car stalled, she had to restart and go again, so uh, only lost, you know, her best practice was a 46, only lost two seconds. Bernard Kevel shares his car with Simon uh, Andrews in the OMS 28, and currently Bernard is winning the shared driver award on this one goes across the line with a 41.20, actually a bit slower. Times are starting to get a bit slower here. I wonder if the humidity here is starting to affect the uh, air and uh, slow the cost of the cars just that little bit. Lynn Owens in front of you with the OMS 28 RPE heading up into Pardon now. And I've got Anthony Hunt on the line with the Gould DJ55 XT. Yes, Lynn uh, already through the second part of the hill uh, into the left-hander. She'll use uh, some of the power in that car to go uh, and exit that corner, quickly negotiate semi-circle, but that's quickly followed by Anthony Hunt um, in the uh, Gold DJ55 uh, with the V8 uh, Cosworth XD engine. So this is an X uh, IndyCar uh, engine V8. So great sound, it'll rev to about 12 or 13,000 RPM and uh, a great way to power this car. Really great power, about 650 horsepower at the back. Yeah, they go a little bit. So Anthony's coming around the semicircle. Sean Gould's on the start line, but something weird going on here. So he's not happy about something. So we're just going to be checking on that for a minute. All right, cars fired up again. It might have been a reset. Uh, anyway, so uh, what did the, sorry, I'm just following along here. So Sandra did the 4869. Lynn Owen did a 4357. 
Bernard did a 41-20. Yeah, they're all losing about half a second. So Sean's off the line. Our, what are, our, one of the runoff winners from uh, last week uh, won the second runoff of Lowe's Park. And he's already through a Tory and up the other side. And then I've got Graham Wynn on the line who actually finished second in that runoff last week. His best ever result. Yeah, uh, Shona showing all his talents uh, through Pardon. Uh, the car just drifting, but he puts the power down beautifully in already through semicircle. If you haven't uh, figured out, uh, he's the builders of uh, those cars, and they're one of the most advanced cars that you'll see today on the hill. 36.86 for sure. Yeah, tenth quicker than uh, his second practice run. The Graham Wins has launched off the line. Uh, 102 miles an hour under the bridge, and we just keep going on and on into a Tories and out the other side, and I'll stop singing now. Yeah, Graham looks a little bit wider uh, into the first corner. It looks like he's um, gone wide uh, at the entry of a pardon as well, but no problem, he's still on track. Um, the car has stopped. I don't know if he's going to be able to fire up the car. It looks like the engine. I um, don't has... know. It'll be hard on the clutch for that thing to start from there. Yes. Um, he is sitting on the track just at pardon. He has stopped. Uh, car sitting on the track, uh, but he, I, I guess it's uh, at risk. I've got a replay on the screen, and he just, just coming into Orchard, the right rear just went onto the grass just a little bit, and then uh, heading up into Pardon, just locked the brakes up a bit and stopped. So, no problem here. I'm just doing a replay on screen, Ben. Oh, the back head, the back, ah, right. The rear wheels locked up under braking and just turned them a little bit, so a little too much rear brake by the looks of it. Um, got it stopped in time and everything, so now they're just trying to roll them back down Pardon again, and we're having trouble going turn left, turn right, all the rest of it, but uh, they'll get it there in a minute. Um, you can probably see it from your vantage point. Yes, uh, I can see all the action from where I am uh, here, Owen. Um, so, yeah, they're basically uh, making him roll down the hill. Um, those uh, cars are not running mirrors because they don't really need them, really. Um, so he's relying on um, the guidance of the marshals uh, just uh, to roll him down the hill, make sure he's uh, got four wheels on the black stuff, and, and then, yeah, just um, on the exit of Orchard, so uh, they're going to help him wall the car back, and then he'll be turning right, going back to the paddock, I believe. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a technical issue on the car, so... Uh, hopefully, um, Scott will be able to jump in this car um, in a few minutes. Yeah, this car is in contention for the British Championship with Scott. Yeah, the rear wheels just locked up going up in the part. And I've got the replay on the screen right now. And before that, he comes through Orchard. The right, the right side wheels just sort of uh, just before getting that little straight before he tories, just had the right wheels in the in the dust a little bit. So, um, yeah. So uh, everything's okay, everything's all connected, not a lot of damage, but they'll uh, be worrying a little bit in the paddock. It's like, okay, we need, we need to check this over, because obviously Scott, this is Scott's uh, weapon of attack for the weekend to try to keep the British Championship alive against Wallace Mengis. He needs to beat Wallace, and that's all there is to it. And set, actually needs to win and set class records, quite possibly. So... Um, Graham's rolling back down the hill now towards me and the start line. Everybody else, there's a couple of crew guys there, and uh, they're ready to get. They'll get that car back down. They'll get it ship shape checked over. The hill climb community here is is quite good. You'll see other competitors, direct competitors, jump in and going. Okay, do you need anything? Everything okay? Uh, what do we need to do to get you back out again? Regardless of who's beating who and everything else, um, it's one of the reasons. You know, you might hill climbing, it's like, oh, we're doing like four times a day. We're going to go up the hill like, you know, less than 60 seconds. But it, uh, you be at one of these events and it's, there's this whole social side of it. It's like going away to a spa for a weekend, which I'll get in trouble. If somebody's going to get me in trouble for comparing that. But right, so uh, bear with me for a second, Ben. I'm just going to fill in the blanks here. Um, it looks like we're just clearing the track. I don't know if they're doing any sweeping or anything up there. Um, but they pulled in the notification indicator and <laughs> 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 
No, we're not saying our words today. The marshals are trying to figure out why I'm not calling it what I'm calling it because I don't want to buy drinks later. Oh, Rick is giving Rick, Rick's giving me a hard time there. Um, Benoit and I have a bet. There's two R words that we don't want to use to jinx the day, so we're not using them. Uh, anyway, Lindsay, uh, who no hang on, who we got here? This is Lindsay Summers, um, Alex's mom, in the uh, Alex's APS for uh, AFS for. I'm really going to ask Alex to rename this car. AFS P4T. Anyway, she's off. Foot to the floor, getting used to this car. It's only, I think, the second time she's driven it. Weekend wise, 76 miles an hour. That seems a bit down, but anyway, she's up to you. Yeah, beautiful sound in this AFS P40. Uh, this is a car that Alex and, uh, and the Summers family has built. A uh, car that uh, Alex has designed himself um, for um, the favorite. Uh, ladies he has in his world, his mom and his wife. Uh, today's uh, mom's Lindsay uh, driving the car. It got a V6 2.5 litre at the back uh, from Opel or Vauxhall here uh, in the UK. An engine that was uh, developed for the uh, German touring car championships in the late 90s. It's a 45.53 for Lindsay. Yeah, I got car 21 on the line with a uh, Edmund Burgess Gould GR55. Class record holder in a Bugatti T51 at this track in that in the Bugattis that run here. This this Prescott Hill Climb is owned and operated by the Bugatti Owners Club, by the way. Um, just want to put that out there. So if you're interested in Bugatti, old and newer then type of thing, and check out the club. Uh, so Edmund, uh, familiar around here, had some throttle issues with the thing. It either stuck open or was only 80% last week at Loden, which would explain his adventures. But uh, much tidier here. He's actually currently sitting 11th in the big car class. That's over two liter race cars. He's got the, um, not sure which engine he's got in it, but then I got Sue Young on the line with the Gould GR51. I'll take it through Ben. Edge just gone through with a 4.0.65. It's actually slower. Susan Young coming under the bridge to you. Yes, uh, at uh, 40.65, and then uh, Susan Young uh, quickly follows her in this uh, beautiful uh, DJ uh, 55. Um, so this is uh, one of the, uh, sorry, DJ De Gaulle 55. Um, so Susan, uh, a regular competitor here on the hills, 25.35, so very close time to Hedmond uh, so far. Uh, she'll be going through uh, the semi entry of semi circles here and no problems to a run. Quickly follow uh, is Paul Crute in this beautiful levered uh, Jaguar OMS 28. If you're wondering why he's got a Jaguar F1 livery, well, this car is running a 3 litre V6 uh, Jaguar engine at the back, uh, straight from the road cars, uh, probably with a bit of uh, work done to it, but it's a very effective uh, way and uh, cost effective way of running. Uh, those cars in the bigger class uh, engine probably down on power compared to the other cars but no problem Paul is a great driver and he'll be going through uh, the finish straight in a few seconds yeah so heading across the line now let's just see if we get any improvement Sue Young is, uh, and Lindsay Summers the only two that have improved their time so far in his third practice John Gould did as well sorry about that Oliver Tomlin son of Sandra Tomlin the car owner in the 2013 model Hillbeam MP97, 73 miles an hour under the bridge, heads into a Tories, heads out of the other side, looking to improve on a 43. Uh, and then Jack Cottrell and Delara Cosworth, that's the IndyCar engine in the back of it, is on the line about ready to go. Over to you. Yes, uh, Oliver making this car uh, justice, uh, showing the power and the speed uh, through the straight bits of the hill, but also through the corners, a great handling car. Uh, great splits looking uh, so far. It's going to be a 39.41 for Oliver Tomlin. Quickly followed by Jack Cottrell in this beautiful Dowry, um, who has been improving all season. He's got the handling sorted in this car, and as I say this, he has a little bit of a moment on the entry of uh, Pardon. No problem, got it back, fired uh, back together, but that's probably going to cost him a few seconds. Um, looking at the splits, uh, just now 21 2 1 through uh, S's and 34 3 0 through semis. Uh, so that's probably going to be just over 40 seconds, a 40.02 for Jack Cottrell. 
Yeah, lost about three seconds. It looks like he uh, just went wide and just let off the throttle completely, so he didn't uh, get, couldn't get the car turned around. On the other hand, Harry Pick is drifting on the exit of uh, Pardon, getting that car around. He's absolutely attacking this course right now. Heading already through the S's, heading up to the side, and then Simon Andrews is launched off in the OMS 28. Yeah, let's see if Harry can get under the 40 second. He posted a 40.59 on his previous run. It's 39.78. Great time for him. Simon Andre uh, quickly follows him. Two seconds off the line, 87 miles an hour under the bridge, and already through the S's. Let's see what he can do on uh, this run. This is one of the uh, OMS uh, 28 that he shares with uh, Bernard Cavill, and um, he posted a 40. Um, 120 before that's a 4127. Great consistency. Yeah, uh, on course now and in your cameras is Stephen Owen, the oh, uh, basically the builder, creator, engineer, you name it, of OMS. It's his, uh, he built them, he designed them. You'll find them all over the place in different sizes and shapes and whatever. Um, so he is Mr. OMS. Uh, wife Lynn shares the car with. Right now, Steve's about 12th with a 39.91. He's going to be looking to improve on this a little bit. He's going to head across the line with a 39.88. So, three 100s improvement, but I think he'd be looking for some more. Terry Graves is the Gould's TJ55 XP is with you, Ben. Yeah, what a fantastic car. Carter has been uh, holding uh, quite a few records uh, on the hills around the UK. A bit slow coming out of uh, Pardon, but. Um, He'll try to make this uh, this on the second part of the hill. A lot of grunts in this uh, car. V8 Cosmos at the back, XDV8 from the Indy cars. Going through semi circles, up the gears, and he'll be going through the finish line. It's a 40.53 for Terry. Yeah, that uh, moves him. Moves him where? Where does it move him to? Let's have a look here. Da -da -do -da -do -do -do. Yep, uh, sitting about 15th. Um, Will Hall's on the line, and this is what a race car looks like straight out of the carbon manufacturing type thing. Um, it's all carbon, there's no paint, that's the way it looks. All the carbon pieces stuck together. Au naturel, I think is the uh, thing. Uh, you kind of have to see it in person. I'm looking at it on, online through our online viewers, and it's hard to actually pick out. There's no paint on this car at the moment, it's just all the carbon fiber. Um, it didn't. It kept starting and stalling there. It was giving him a bit of a grief. So, Will's on the line now. He's about fourth or fifth quickest so far in practice. Launches it off the line. The, the whole ground shakes when this thing loads. A 1.8464 foot time and 111 miles an hour. Heads into a Torre spin. Yeah, they've been through the quickest uh, we've seen so far today off the line. And uh, well, we'll uh, going up the gears and through uh, out and now we're great turn of speed uh, coming out of that corner. Let's see what he can do on the second part of this run. Beautiful through the S's into the left-hander. Going to use the throttle to go through semi-circles. Carry the speed. Try and keep it nice through there. And then off he goes. Up the gears through the finish line at 36.55 for Will Hall. Yeah, that jumps up the second quickest in the big car class between Scott Moran and my, uh, Matthew Ryder at the moment. David, you're in. Number six in the championship last year. Uh, not quite sure on the numbers yet. I'm going to need Chris to tell me who's all the permutations. In the Gould GR55B, so the older Gould, but still still a very capable weapon on the hills in the hands of David. And then lining up on the front here, we've got Matthew Ryder, Ben. Yes, uh, David already uh, through semi-circles, uh, looking uh, to improve on his uh, previous run. He's going to be in the early 60s. It's 36.25 for David. Right, um, so yeah, Matthew Ryder, 36.5 for David. Yeah, put him into second quickest, actually. Matthew Ryder off the line, only two seconds, 64 foot time, 102 miles an hour through Orchard, coming your way down into Torres now. And then I've got Trevor Willis lining up. Yeah, Matt Ryder, one of the young guns uh, in this championship, he's run two. Uh, runoff so far this season and he can do it in this car. Uh, he was second quicker so far this morning in uh, practice so let's see uh, where he can put the car uh, in this third practice run. The temperature is up, the track uh, conditions are perfect, he should be looking to improve. It is 36.31. Yeah, uh, that puts Matt only still third. Yeah, only still third in practice. Trevor Willis in his OMS 28. 
Doing it slightly different than everybody else. Heads up the hill and pardons. Uh, not sure on the splits. Comes around pardon out the other side. And then I've got Alex Summers in his own AFS P4T. Off the line he goes. You got this one right away, and Trevor is uh, one of the drivers that may not have all of the grunt in this car. He's been campaigning this car for a few years now, but it's 37.02, very competitive time for this uh, run. But meanwhile, Alex Summers uh, quickly follows him in this uh, home design car, and uh, he's been campaigning this car for the last two rounds of uh, the season, so you'll see this car at Lotton later this month again. Um, so this weekend he'll be looking to try and snatch a few points in the runoff. Uh, this car is a new car uh, that's just been uh, designed for a few years and he's been campaigning this car just this Yeah, 38.14 for Alex. Yeah, round nine. It still needs to collect as many points as he can to um, finish the season with a reasonable number. Wallace Menke, current points leader, defending champion. And with the, if you look at the car on that side, it's red. You look at that side, it's black. It's been a lot of work gone into that by Sean Cool and his team to get the tub back together and the team to get it back to Lone Park last weekend. So if you've been following Hill Climb TV uh, for the last few events, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. So Wallace generally doesn't go flat out in practice. He's testing it. They're collecting data seeing how the car is going. He's heading across the line now. He'll put his foot on a brake with a 36.15. And I take my foot out of my mouth because that was second quickest. And on the line, I've got Jason Tunnicliffe in an Empire Wraith uh, in the fourth induction class. So we're just jumping back to K2 for a second. We'll get Jason in, currently sitting third in class. Through Orchard, 107 miles an hour in the Torre Ben. Yes, uh, quickly exiting uh, that corner, no problem. Up the gears, popping and banging all the way through. Up it hurries, beautiful line through uh, that corner on the inside, through the S's, and no problem in that second part of his run. 107 miles an hour uh, on in the early part of the run under the bridge. Uh, but yeah, a great run from uh, Wallace just early on, a 36.15, uh, just uh, 0.01. Uh, down from the quickest time of the day from Scott Moran uh, early on today. Well, Jason Tunnicliffe did a 38.68, drops him up to second, but he's still two seconds behind Paul Hames, who at that speed could end up in the runoffs tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. Join us tomorrow if, you, uh, if you're watching Hill Climb UK TV or Hill Climb TV uh, in the U for the U Oh, good Lord, let me start that one again. Hill Climb TV live tomorrow streaming will be the british championship uh qualifying rounds the time runs and the runoffs so don't forget join us tomorrow i think we're starting mid-morning uh for coverage all day and we'll keep you up to date with all the action going on uh we are on third practice on the saturday if you're joining us first time on hill climb tv Please like, share, follow, and subscribe if you could. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. We, we need a couple hundred more. We may need a little more than a couple hundred, but we are close to 10,000 subscribers. And um, I'm on a one-man mission to try and get uh, there before the end of the season, which means we've got another live stream in a few weeks uh, coming from Lowton Park for the season finale for the Hill Climb Championship. So if you haven't subscribed, it doesn't cost you anything, but please hit that button and you'll help us bring you the content you're seeing now and even more and better content. Rich is constantly developing and coming up with ideas. So if you're enjoying it, hit the button. Right on the track is Amanda George in that Chevron B19. And I got Andy Tippett lying up on the line with a Brabham BC30X. Uh, ben? Yes, uh, Amanda already through a uh, semicircle on the top of the hill. Uh, in this beautiful Chevron B19. This is a four-cylinder uh, Ford engine uh, at the back in uh, 49.60 for Amanda. Quickly followed by Andy uh, Tippett in the Brabham BT30, powered by a Rovers 3.5 uh, litre at the back. A beautiful car. This is the classic shape that you'd uh, probably draw as a kid if you were to drive drew uh, probably a uh, racing car and uh, this was the test mule of the Brabham BT30 so this car actually never raced on the circuit but it made its way to hill climb and uh, Andy just uh, posted a 47.28 in this car 
Yeah, just a touch down. So very consistent, Andy, is in that car. Found it about eight years ago in a box of bits and brought it back. You got Grant Cratchley in the Brabham BT21B coming through on the line, uh, improving. And then Martin Jones is right behind, already coming through Pardon here. Now this car is the next Formula 2 car. It's got a Formula 1 gearbox, but it's only ever done hill climbing. So it's another one of those cars that's built for it. Uh, a very famous Formula 1 driver later on actually drove this car, and my name slips me at the moment. But he's heading through the crash. Uh, George Crutchley did a 50.45, so actually went slower. But Martin's done a 47.14, and he's gone four tenths quicker. That puts him in second in class. And on the line, I have Robin Johnson in the Tiga SF83. Which is about to launch. Ooh, squealing tires and everything. Let's hear it for old school launches. No traction control, just squealy rubber. Anyway, launches off, comes under the bridge, 68 miles an hour, heading into Itares, and then I've got car 151, another sports racer on the line, that's Richard Brown in the Malik at K-17. Anyway, Ben? Yeah, this car would have uh, had a, this was originally a Formula Ford car, uh, probably had a crossflow at the back, but now running a 1.6 uh, Peugeot engine with a 16 uh, valve head. Uh, from uh, the MI-16, so the car, the engine that you'd find in the 309 MI-16 or the 405 MI-16, the car they've just uh, been uh, working through, so you've just a much more modern engine compared to what you'd find at the time, a 48.75 for Robin uh, Johnson. But uh, here's another uh, great car, the Malik of Richard Brown, going through at the entry of Pardon now. Um, very balanced car. Is uh, this is a front mid-engine car, pretty much, um, and uh, quite a, a distinctive design. So you can tell a Maluk uh, from far away. But a great car. Uh, Richards has been uh, campaigning this car for quite a while now. Quickly followed by John Harding. And if you're wondering uh, why he makes uh, such a whiny noise, well, this car is uh, still has the uh, six cylinder xk engine but has a supercharger strapped onto it it looks like john was a little bit coming a little slow coming out of pardon but no problem probably uh, mr gear is already through uh, the s's and uh, going through the second part of his run actually i'm just looking on screen there it looked like it was black smoke coming out there so i don't know if it overfueled he was trying to get it started again He's still running, the clock's still ticking. Simon Braithwaite in the Ford Escort RS 1600 is coming fast. John Harding has made it across, oh no he hasn't, he still hasn't crossed the line, something's going up over there. Simon's on his way already into the S, out of the S's here, into semicircle. Um, around semicircle he goes. John got to cross with a 6922. Yeah, smoke coming from the Jaguar, you can see it there. Simon's done a 5.0.40. And actually, uh, I think it's improved his time a bit. And then now we've got the classic Mini. And yes, you saw it. It drifts more than the Mark I Escort. So uh, that's how you drive a Mini fast. Matt Clark, beautiful car, knows how to drive the Mini, Ben. Yes, uh, Mini eyes are... Uh, you might look in... It's a front-wheel drive, so you want to try and keep it as straight as possible. But if you want to make them run the corners, they have to drift a little bit. And they're just big go-karts. And, and I absolutely love them going through. I was at Silverstone last weekend for the Silverstone Festival and through some of the tightest corners, those cars are just drifting. It's a beautiful motion. Uh, this car is running on historic uh, Dunlop tires as well. So uh, not as um, modern radial tires. It's a 50.61 for Matt. Yeah, you've got Tom Margarisi in the Renault Twingo 133. Uh, with Alpine uh, racing stripes on it, you know, make it go faster. You know, you know, racing stripes always go faster. Um, and this is the Bugatti Owners Club Saloon Car uh, Championship, the Handicap Series. They have all handicaps, so they've got target times, and it's who's ever closest or faster than their target time sort of wins the class type thing. I don't have the handicap times at the moment, but apparently I might have them tomorrow, so I might be able to fill you in on that. I have a feel that we're going to have a bad, bad, bad batch of math, mathematician going on here. And on the screen now in front of Ben is Martin Saunders and another Mark I Escort. Yes, uh, this is a 2-litre um, Escort, uh, beautifully turned out. 
Again, uh, this one uh, doesn't go as slightly as uh, the one that we have seen driven by Simon, um, but uh, again, it, this car is driven to handicap. Um, Simon, I don't have a time written down on my sheet from uh, his previous run. I'll give you a quick look into that in a few seconds. Uh, but yeah, one of the most iconic car selling cars that we've seen campaigning rallies, but also in circuit racing. What a wonderful car to see uh, today on the hill. 53.73. Yeah, uh, doing all right. That puts him second, well, second on scratch time. Scratch time means there's no handicap applied but there will be handicap times there. I've got Richard George in the Chevron B19 coming up the hill. Beautiful car. Just look at the dashboard and that thing, and it's got all old, you know, old school gauge. I say it's old school. It's got all the original gauges, brushed dash, uh, aluminum dash and everything. And it's just like, wow, it's almost a piece of art, that. And Oliver Slater in a Janetta G15. These are sports racing cars and racing cars manufactured up to 1971 for Richard George in the Chevron and then Oliver Slater, I think we're dropping back to the handicap, uh, the new barn championship handicap. So we'll see what happens. Richard George done a 5098. Ben, you've got Oliver Slater in the G15 and Austin Weltman's coming with a Lotus Elise Series 1. Uh, the Genius has always competitive cars on the hill climbs. The engine is uh, hanging out the back like the Porsches, give them great traction out of the uh, tight corners, especially here at uh, Prescott, uh, coming out of Pardon. A beautiful car. This is running the Coventry Climax engine that you'll find also in the Hellman Hemp. But quickly follows uh, is Austin Weltman in this uh, beautiful uh, Lotus Series 1. The Lotus Elise celebrated 25 years uh, this uh, uh, year and uh, obviously stopped production uh, earlier uh, this year. So the last series of cars have been produced out of the SL factory uh, back in the south of England. A great uh, car, great sports car, a very uh, popular car with the Rover K series engine at the back. Uh, for Austin it's a time of 56.43. Yeah, that's a good time and on your screens and uh, you can hear it coming is the Buckler Bellamy Special of Jeremy Rivers Fletcher. And if you're wondering what that big bar is sticking out the back that looks like the world's skinniest rear wing, that's actually a push bar to push the car. There's no starter on this car, so if it needs to be pushed, there's nothing to push it with, so it has this handle on the back. This is a one-of-a-kind car, originally built in 1959 or 1959 or 1962, somewhere in that era. And it belonged to Jeremy's dad, and he had, dad actually hated the thing. Apparently it burnt to the ground. Somebody resurrected it, and then Jeremy eventually decided to buy it. And, uh, or somebody else bought it anyway, long story. But anyway, it's back in the family again. And on your stream is Rebecca Crocom uh, in the Van Diemen RF84. These are the Bugatti Owners Club handicap race cars we're looking at at the moment. So they've all got handicaps uh, in regards to their scoring. Yes, uh, Rubik has through, uh, already through the S's uh, into the entry and yes, uh, Jeremy looked a little bit slower in this run at 90.80 compared to 58.30 which was an excellent time uh, earlier in this second practice but uh, probably uh, had a, maybe a few issues on the car, managed to get a run through the course no problem, 55.14 for Rebecca uh, Crockham, uh, quickly followed by uh, Peter Hockey in this uh, Mark III uh, Renault Clio, two litre engine car going through uh, Pardon. This is the Mark III with the six speed gearbox, four cylinder, naturally aspirated uh, engine. Great car. Uh, this uh, will be a very competitive car in any class that you'll be running uh, those cars. Yeah, Peter Hockey in the Clio. So this is now the Bugatti Owners Club New Barn RS Interclub Speed Championship. Essentially, uh, road cars, uh, or present as road cars. And so it doesn't matter what maker, model, and engine size, it's a handicap system. Essentially, the personal best is the handicap. So you always, in hill climbing, you're always striving to beat your personal best. Well, this championship actually uh, rewards you for beating your personal best by giving you points towards the end of season championships. So it's very equal and fair. Essentially, you're racing against yourself. Um, so, I mean, you look at the, you, on the screen here, you're looking at after practice runs, you've got Stuart Diaper and Caterham, followed by Will Goff and an Alfa Romeo. Where do you get that to in the same class? So there you go. So Will Goff's just done a 56.74.
Martin Rawson in the Toyota MR2, which we're not going to discuss in French. Benoit has to bite his tongue on this one. And then we've got Noel Waugh. Noel Waugh. I hope I pronounced it right. Mazda MX-5. Uh, and it was completely standard, Ben. Yes, uh, Martin uh, already through uh, exiting semicircle and toward the end of his run through the uh, finish line. It's a 79.79. Uh, Carter has been um, campaigning for a few years now in hill climb. Um, 1.8 litre uh, natural aspirated and Toyota made a lot of effort in the MR2 to sort uh, the handling characteristics. So great um, handling car, very balanced and quickly follows here Miss Patrick Hadley in this uh, Morgan uh, Plus 8. So uh, this is running the V8 Rover engine, 3.9 litre, a car they absolutely loves. Uh, it's his sixth Morgan uh, after our chat this morning. He had a Porsche and he said this is way too complicated for me. Give me something simple where I can actually fix it myself. He's already going through the finish straight. It's going to be a time of 55.48 for Patrick. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yes, Patrick went back to the Morgan, got a nice V8 in it. Really nothing modified about it. It is what it is. Richard Morris in his MX-5 is coming through the S's now on your screens. Um, and up the top there. And then Tom Brown in the Malik Mark 17, uh, the shared car. Now, he just stopped him on the line. I don't know if it's got a technical issue. Just having a look at it. Um... If you go into the paddock and see the difference, this is a Malik 17, and we've got a Malik 20. And the differences, even though the layouts are different, you can see the difference is clear. And they're only probably a couple of marks apart, only a couple of years apart. So um, it looks like they're checking. It looks like the car might have been dribbling something, a bit of, uh, a bit of oil or something on there. So the marshals have spotted it. We don't take any chances with oils and lubricants on the track. As competitors, we trust the marshals that the track will be 100% safe to go, so the drivers aren't worrying about, oh, is it this, that, or anything else. Uh, they do a brilliant job. Again, thank you very much for them and the rescue crews and the volunteers, organizers, and anybody else that might want to throw a bottle of water my way. Um, so, yeah, so we pushed the Malik out of the way. The driver's getting out, so there's some sort of technical issue, so they're going to have a look at that. Uh, so it's safely off in the grass uh, between me and the end. So no problems out of the way. So next up, we got car 188. This is Rob Gutteridge in a Renault Clio RS. Completely standard car. You drive this to work every day, drive a shop every day. He might do, actually do that. So we'll wait and see. Uh, we've got the uh, just inspector checking that out. They're making, you know, looking at situation. And uh, yeah. So everything seems to be uh, okay, but they're having a look at the car, see if they can figure out it's got dri dribbles on it. Right, Rob's up to you somewhere. Yes, uh, already through uh, the exit of uh, Pardon, so we no problem. This is a beautiful uh, blue uh, Clio. Is the uh, evocative Gordini uh, white stripes in the middle. And uh, yeah, this is one of the uh, few uh, Clear Mark Series that we'll see today on the hill, but quickly followed by a strong diaper. Um, 69 miles an hour under the bridge uh, in this uh, Caterham 310R. So, this is running the 1.6 litre Ford engine. Always a quick driver, making great progress. I'd like to see what his handicap time is. Um, it'll probably be very close to, to that because he's going real well so far. Uh, today. He's already through semi-circles, beautiful lines through there on the inside and you use all the power to go through the finish uh, line. It's a 47.08 for start. Yeah, uh, that's a good improvement. You should see a Suzuki Swift coming your way of uh, Tim Stokes. Yes, uh, and also a great car, uh, great chassis, 1.6 litre in this uh, car. Uh, a car that it was uh, about 130 horsepower, um, but yeah, a very uh, nice handling car. Quite a revy engine in in this, and uh, yeah, you'll beautifully. This is a standard car that you can take on the hill. This is the beauty of hill climbs. But follow uh, him is John Helwood, uh, who's uh, driving this beautiful Civic Type R. Uh, this is a two-liter four-cylinder engine. We'll rev about to eight and a half thousand. 
RPM. This is a standard car, not many modification. A little bit of an exo, so it makes a bit more noise than standard. Uh, but this is a car that he's been uh, driving. This is his first com uh, competitive season uh, with this car. So getting up to grips with the sport, with the hill uh, here at Prescott. Uh, but yeah, what a great car to, to drive. A six-speed gearbox and 200 horsepower under the bonnet. Yeah. Um yeah, so very good little car. Uh, we got George Perks on the hill with a Renault Clio 182, and Colin Richards has launched off an MG Midget. Um, just for our spectators uh, here and online, originally they were only going to have three practice sessions today. The third practice session is what you've been watching and coming to the end of. Now, the organizers have decided since the, it's, if you were watch, following last weekend, you know why I'm saying this. The organizer said, well, the drivers have behaved themselves all day, and based on the timing and everything, they have offered up, it's not mandatory or anything, they've offered up a fourth practice run for any competitors that want to do a fourth practice run. Now, so most of the competitors, odds are they will take a fourth practice run, some might not. Now, there is one person that hasn't had a third practice run, and that's Scott Moran. Um, I don't know if Chris is down in the paddock and he can go get us uh, get us an update on what's going on. Um, hopefully he can hear me and will get back to me. But yeah, Graham had that problem with the car and obviously Scott's chasing the championship. So whether or not, if they're doing a fourth practice run, that would give Scott an a chance to actually test the car if they can get it sorted out. But I'm not sure what the hang up is in the moment. So I just want to announce that. So we are doing fourth practice runs. So. Stay tuned with us. We're going to keep going for a while yet, uh, bringing you more action on the hill climb circuit here at Lowton Park. Uh, so on the screen is Maggie Richards in the Renault Clio RS200, and Lawrence Marks has left the line in the Van Diemen RF84, which uh, you just saw a few minutes ago, driven by Rebecca. So, Ben? Yes, uh, great uh, to hear that we can get a force uh, practice run uh, this afternoon so yeah this is obviously optional so we'll see uh, who will be competing and uh, taking this false practice run uh, it's great practice beautiful conditions so shouldn't stop uh, any of the drivers uh, Lawrence is just going through the finish line it's a 51.90 uh, for her in the Formula Ford and uh, Maggie Richards to uh, update you on the previous run a 58.42 Colin Richards a 61.16 Right, so our cameras are actually pointing at the Graham Wynn Scott Moran car, and there is some business going on down there in the trailer. They looks like they've got the right front suspension off the car. Uh, the steering knuckle and brakes and everything are off the car there, so there's some sort of technical problem. Uh, on the line, we've got David Garnett, but this is uh, breaking news here. This is, um, I'm sure they'll get it fixed, but he's missed third practice. It looks like I see it looks like that might be Roger in there. Uh, we've got Graham in there and a couple of the other competitors and their crews are in there looking at the situation. I'm take I'm gonna guess and I don't know if Chris can uh, wander over there, get something and come and see me so we can give our uh, listeners, uh, our viewers, uh, an update on that. But um, yeah something 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 we got some last minute uh, interesting things going on, so we'll try to get back to you that as soon as we can. On the track, fourth practice run, David Garnett has decided to have one in his, I'm gonna use the word, venerable Renault Clio. And James Chalmers in a Mazda MX-5 has decided, yep, I'm gonna have one of those. The sun is shining. We're getting all hot and bothered, so why not? So here we go, uh, yeah, Ben. Yes, yeah, so if you want to have a Clio, you might as well have it in the right color. Uh, David Garnett in this uh, beautiful uh, cup blue t uh, Clio, a 53.39 for David. That's uh, so a little bit uh, s uh, slower, sorry, than uh, his uh, previous time, a 52.52. But uh, James Charmer has already uh, taken the opportunity to go through the S's, 41.34 through there. 
into uh, the entry of semi-circle now. No problems through there, going to try and carry as much speed. The MX-5 being obviously a great starting car, but Peter Seidel already through the uh, entry of uh, Etoris and up through the gears. This is about 244 horsepower in this car, so it's probably as much as you can get off that two litre engine. And uh, this morning he said straight to me, you know what? I'm gonna try and get the class record tomorrow. So today's practice, I'm gonna try and set up the car uh, as uh, best as I can. He had a little bit of uh, uh, tweaks to the front end and he's really happy with the handling of that car. So he's gonna try as hard as possible uh, today and tomorrow. Let's see what he can post in this run. It's gonna be a 48.83 for Peter, a great time. Yeah, I don't have any comparisons on screen at the moment, but I'm just wondering if we actually don't have four columns. <laughs> because Rich isn't used to doing four practices in one shot. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens there. We'll keep you up to date. James Hudson in that Volkswagen Golf. Rapidly quick young lag in this thing. Um, I've only seen the car, I saw the car last week and I've seen the car today. Finished third in the class last week, giving Peter Siddle a run for his money. He's only got 180 horsepower and change. It's only 1.8, uh, 16 valve, but he drives it like he'd stole it. And then he stole it again. Um, and then he's followed by Richard Page and an MGF Trophy. We'll see that car in a minute. But he's going to go across the line. Ben, I'll just take it across this one. So across the line with a 5.0.53. And on your screens now is an MGF. 500 pounds, competition license, helmet suit. We'll get you out on the track. So there you go, Ben. Yeah, 50.53 for James. Uh, great uh, time. Uh, just looking at back at the time of Peter Seidel, 48.83. This is about three tenths off uh, the class records, which is posted in there, Renault Clear, uh, a record uh, held by Robert Warwood, Marwood uh, back in 22. Um, and then, yeah, Richard uh, Pate already through uh, the entry of uh, semi-circle here in the MGF. This is the 160 trophy. This is, was a special version uh, with uh, bigger brakes, a more powerful uh, K-series engine at the back, 160 horsepower, as you would have guessed by the name, is 60.62 uh, for Richard's pad. But Jonathan Legman has been really competitive in this class again. And I think those two with Peter will be um, having a great battle uh, today and tomorrow. Let's see what time he can post in the Lotus Elise. This is obviously a much lighter car than the Clio, a 48.84. So very close. Yeah, that's a good time. We've got Oliver Meek in the Vauxhall VX220 Turbo. Uh, over two liter. Oh, I believe Rich has figured out how to get four columns on the screen, although it's covering up all the racing, but here we go. Uh, Oliver Meek, this is an over two liter class car, road going uh, car, uh, which means they have to be road legal in this country, MOT, uh, which is like safety inspection, yearly, taxed and uh, insured. And a lot of these cars are driven to the track. Some of the cars are daily drivers. Some of them are second cars just for, for out playing on the weekend. So you'll see Simon Tarling on the screen in his Porsche 996 GT3 and Ross McDonald in the classic Porsche 911 2.7 RS rep with a 3.3 engine in the back, because why not? He's on the track as well, Ben. Yeah, Oliver's put uh, things right in the VX220 uh, car. Uh, the turbo engine 52.14, about uh, 2.6 second quicker than his uh, previous run. He posted a 52.87 earlier before lunch. Uh, but yeah, Simon uh, just already uh, through the finish line of 50.59 in the 996 uh, GT3. Great time as well. He's improved by about six tenths uh, on his uh, previous run. Quickly followed by uh, Simon Tarling already through uh, semi-circles and onto the finish straight of 50.84 for him uh, in this uh, beautiful car again. Rodney Isles, class leader. Uh, he's involved in the, over in the, I think it's the Hill Climb Cup Championship. I think he's one of the ones in there. They're all hunting. You get extra points for class records and championships are so close right now even though they're, they're people tied in the overall, like in the, in the overall class, you know, they're in different classes and everything. But if they get a class record in their championship, they actually gain a point. So there's a lot to play for here. So Rodney, I know, is hunting for it. Now he's still stuck at uh, 47.56, so that's only three one hundred slower than his uh, fastest time so far. Richard York in the Porsche Cayman 718 GT4 Club Sport. 
is already coming through the S's there. And Robert Lancaster Gay, that, seemed, that was giving Rodney Isles in the Alpha the biggest hassle, uh, is now on the track as well, or just launched. Ben? Yeah, great time from uh, Rodney Hills at 47.56. It's been going real well in this uh, Alfa Romeo 4. See, this is a carbon tub in this car, and the only big modification on this car, other than uh, uh, very uh, street legal tyres, but quite uh, grippy tyres, is a big turbo on this. So this is a four-cylinder turbo engine with a double-clutch gearbox. Rob is going through the his run, and this is going through the uh, GT4, so we've got a big... Um, competition and uh, a big uh, contingency of uh, Caymans today on the hill, up through the gears, through the finish line, 48.70 for Rob. Yeah, Robbie Barrel in another Porsche Cayman GTS is on its way to you. I think that's got, is that the flat four in the back of that thing? Yes, this will be the 2.5 uh, turbo engine. Uh, Cardo is a bit, uh, you know, uh, the fan probably didn't like that as much because it didn't have six cylinder. But actually, a uh, very competitive car uh, on the hill and uh, very tunable. So you can get quite a lot of power out of that engine. 47.86 for Robbie. Quickly following him is Ian Richards uh, in uh, the car that he shares with uh, David Garnett. Uh, it'll be going through these uh, runs, so great to see uh, him running again, taking the, the opportunity of running his force practice run. Yeah, uh, so we moved up, so Ian Richards is still working, he's two. He's under two liter two wheel drive, and now you're look, looking at Izzy Lawrence in the four wheel drive category car. She's currently the fastest in practice in this thing. I'm just looking at Peter Siddle in the two liter road going. Peter Siddle and John Limeade are separated by like one one hundredth of a second. That's going to be interesting to watch. Izzy is down in the 49.1. I think she wants a 48, and I do believe she's up on her times at the moment. So this might actually happen here. Let's see if she can get into a 48. She's going across the line. Oh, not quite. 49.28. Lost a tenth there somewhere. Peter Richings in the. Uh, not so modified, i.e. this is the way it came from the factory floor. Toyota Yaris, very experienced racer, circuit racer for a long, long time in Clubman's. Is now just sort of retiring to the hills in the family there. Usually shared with his wife, Joy. Joy is here, but she's um, a highly regarded photographer, Joy is, and she's out taking pictures today. So uh, you may see some of her photographs. Uh, I always check online, check the Prescott Hill Climb site and some of the other Hill Climb UK sites and stuff, and you will see these pictures show up. And Ray Lore is on your screen in the Caterham 7 Super Rent Super, yeah, super, super Sprint. And, uh, yeah, Ben, go on. <laughs> yeah, Ray uh, used to be an instructor at some of the hills. I believe he was a driving instructor at Lawton. Uh, park. This is a 47.734 uh, Ray Law. Quickly followed uh, by Anthony Sherman. Great time of the line, 2.39, 65 miles an hour. This is the 1.6 uh, Academy car, uh, car that you could uh, drive for an entire season um, on track, and then you get uh, the deal is that you get the car back at the end of the season. Uh, it's going through the finish straight. That's going to be a great time, a 51.54. Sorry. Yeah, a little bit down. This is Class B cars. Then we've got David Meek. We're jumping back to uh, Class A2. Um, yeah, they're really keeping us busy in here now. Uh, so, yeah, A2 car. So, two, uh, road cars over two liter, not four wheel drive. So, David Meek shares this car with Oliver Meek and the Vauxhall VX220 Turbo. And then we flip back to Class B with John Pick in the AMS Matea, a uh, 50.97 for David Meek. Uh, that is an improvement of a couple of tenths. John Pick in this Subaru Impreza-based kick car, they made 42 of these, so therefore it is legal for Class B. Uh, you needed more than 25, road car specialist production. So he's on the track, and we've got Jerry Neary that's launched off the line, heading for a Tories right now. There he is on screen in the Westfield. Ben, oh, John Pick did a 48.27. Went a bit slower that time. Yes, uh, they're just uh, firing at them uh, at us uh, very quickly. 48.27 for John Pig. Darren Neri uh, making his way through the S's and onto uh, semicircles in the um, Westfield. Uh, no problems through here at the top of the hill. Quickly followed by um, Rob Lloyd. 
in this uh, Azu uh, Westfield here. Uh, so this is uh, again we are on page 15 of your program. This is the road going specialist production cars um, in uh, class B. Uh, Rob is uh, already through the entry of semicircles, no problems through the second part on the hill. He's going to try and carry as much speed uh, as possible through that. Those cars are very lightweight, about 600 to uh, kilos and then uh, very very quick cars but meanwhile we've got Richard Price in this beautiful uh, Caterham this is a 1.6 litre so this is the smallest capacity engine car in this class I believe uh, other than the uh, Fisher Fury and the Riot um, but he drives these cars beautifully it's so quick uh, through the uh, splits here at the top of the hill 33.52 through the S's and uh, 39 3-0 at semicircle, great time so far, it's going to be a cracking run for Richard Price, this is 46.28. Yeah, that's, that's a hundred, within a hundredth of his original fast time, so still going there. Steve Garner is on the hill, car 52. Uh, for our spectators and our viewers, this fourth run wasn't planned. Not all competitors, depending on their car, especially the more modified cars, they may go, I don't need a fourth run. So if you do not see your car running, uh, the one you're cheering for, you want to see, please don't panic. They've just decided not to. Because uh, a lot of the plan for the weekend, tire wear, fuel, and all the rest of it, um, it's great that we get the fourth run, and we appreciate to the uh, organizers and the competitors for making up, you know, leaving enough time to do this. So just in case you uh, are, are looking, oh, oh, where's my car gone? They may have chosen not to run. Um, any car that we know have a problem is, i.e. Scott Moran's car, we'll keep you updated when we get more information on that. So just wanted to throw that in. We're a couple of modified cars, uh, up to 1400 cc's. Got Andrew Russell in the G15 and Eric Morey in the Hillman M that I swear has got launch contraction control on it, the way it come launching off the line. Andrew's done a 5108, so that's his quickest run of the day. Very consistent, with a couple of tents in each there, and uh, you've got the imp with you, Ben. Yes, I uh, read through the entry of uh, Pardon, uh, no problem. Uh, this is a uh, modified production class here. Uh, Eric Murray in this beautiful Ailman imp. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you're uh, live still uh, and following the live stream on YouTube, thank you for uh, keep keeping up with us. Uh, you'll get another run so if you uh, sat down in your office or on the sofa watching on the big screens uh, you get one more so win-win uh, for everyone uh, for the competitors but also everyone online if you still have some questions uh, please post them live uh, we'll make sure that we have a look through uh, the chat as well and try to answer them just had a message from uh, my friend uh, uh, race car uh, involved and uh, he's a good friend now. He's on holiday with his family in Crete, sitting on some sort of balcony, having a beverage, overlooking the sea, watching us live on YouTube. Do you believe that? That's, uh, that sounds I'm gonna shout. I'm gonna do two shout outs. I don't normally do this. Dean, I hope you guys are having a good holiday. Jane and Lucy, um, keep Dean off the stupid phone. And uh, Emma, Glad you're enjoying your afternoon and beverages. Glad to hear from you. Right, Stephen Moore, I know what he's hunting for. He hasn't got there yet. He's down in the 44th, heavily modified Mitsubishi. I think Jamie Bradley will be here tomorrow to run in this class, and it's gonna be these two head to head. Damien's been the, just the quicker of the two, but Stephen has actually got a top, the top speed is actually quicker. So we'll have to wait and see. And what, on the screen now, you got Nigel Elliott in the Triumph TR7. V8. Yeah, Stephen Moore is a little bit um, slower than his previous run of 45.16 compared to 44.44, but uh, Nigel Lilliot is uh, quickly following him in this TR7 uh, V8 engine car. This is a 3.9 litre Rover V8 at the front. Uh, the strip bare to the bone and it's trapped two turbo on it, so about 500 horsepower. It's a car that is rebuilt after crashing it a few years ago. And so 53.27 for Nigel earlier. Joy Hall uh, follows him in that uh, beautiful Caterham uh, that is, she shares with husband Ray. Uh, Joy is uh, 
named Stretcher here uh, at Prescott and uh, she'll be having a great battle with her husband, 48.76. We'll have to look who has been the quickest of the two. Yeah, I'm just having a look. Joy actually doesn't instruct here anymore. She actually does loads of park. Just to clarify, it was a cha change of story there. Um, and I was going to check, but I blinked and I missed it. So Stuart Dow is on the screen. Kater Hayabusa. I think Ray has actually still got the advantage over Joy this weekend, Ben. Yeah, he's posted a 47.48 uh, in his uh, second practice run this morning when I look at the times. So he's got he's got the lead so far, but um, nothing to uh, be worried about. Uh, I'm sure tomorrow uh, will be all to play. I'm being teased by ice cream down here. I did have an ice cream. Uh, I snuck one in as I came back in. That was like 400 hours ago. Right, Mike West is over the line in the Fisher Fury with a 48.51. Not really any improvement. He's been bouncing around the 48s, low 48s all afternoon. Sam Mickelson, who's actually been about, he was second quickest, then he was dropped down to fifth. Uh, partner Robin in this car um, is actually second quickest. So. Sam's looking to improve, and he's going across the line with some time. Yeah, 44.81, yeah, that's much better. Moves him up to third again. Alan McDonald is actually leading. This is Sports Lieber cards up to two liter, class F. Uh, Alan in the SR4 traveled all the way here from Scotland uh, just to uh, enjoy this weekend and to entertain us. Something about class records as well, but we'll ignore that for a minute. And then David Bickley in a Radical is somewhere on the course. There he is, coming through the Tories and heading up toward Prescott. Allen's at a 42-49, which is just a little bit quicker than earlier. Yeah, fantastic time from uh, uh, Alan McDonald uh, in, the, uh, in this car. You could hear he, he's definitely using all the revs on that car. But David Bickley is quickly following him in this uh, Radical SR1 uh, Sport. This is uh, running Hayabusa. Uh, bike engine at the back already through semicircles. This is almost like a Le Mans prototype. It carries can carry a lot of speed through the corners of 45.53 uh, for David Bickley. Martin Watts uh, in the silver right uh, definitely makes a ride on the hill of thousand cc engine bike at the back uh, of this car. This is actually, I believe, road legal. Uh, I think he will have number plate, um, so uh, you can actually drive this on the road if you wanted to. I'm not sure if the R1 ride is actually the number plate. I uh, can't remember. I know I've talked to him about this before. Dave Bickley's done a 45.53. Uh, Martin Watts is looking to get out of the 46s somehow. We'll have to see if he's uh, No, he hasn't done that. Still done a 46.7. We've got Mike Lee in the fourth LM. He's currently about fourth in class, but he's in the 44s, so he's looking for more. Um, anyway, heads up the hill through Pardon, and then I got Richard Batassian in the OMS SC1 on the line, ready to go in a minute. Um, if you can hear us in the paddock, we've got a couple of cars, yeah, get your hands devices hooked up, double check your safety gear, folks. Um, make sure you're hooked up before you get to the line. Right, uh, Richard Batassian, uh, yeah, Mike Lee's done a 44.61, so that keeps him roughly about third in class. Richard's all rest, ready to go, and uh, yeah, he's going to go off the line in a minute, and at some point he's going to get to you. There he goes. Yeah, Launches off the line, and over to you, Ben. Yeah, Mike uh, almost uh, four tenths quicker from uh, his previous run, so we'll be pleased uh, with that uh, last run. Uh, Richard passes through 78 miles an hour under the bridge in this uh, beautiful uh, OMS SC1 again. Um, car that's running a bike engine already through the um, airpin here on the left hander hooks the car through the finish straight through the uh, straight sorry onto uh, the S's into the left hander let's see what he can do on this run Richard uh, posted uh, 45.43 just in his uh, previous run so we'll be looking to improve on this and that's a 44.95 so about four tenths quicker yeah, Bob Penrose. Robert drove up the car last in this thing and it was not happy. It was sort of dying and running and dying and backfiring and black smoke. Glad to see they've got whatever it is sorted. So Bob's out heading the hill. This is an over two liter uh, sports Lieber car. How far over? Let's try seven liters. Uh, anyway, heads into out of the S's now. 
We've got Duncan Barnes in the Norma F20F M20FC with a Civic Type R engine. It's got a turbo slap to the side of it, making 550 horsepower. That's a new engine for this car. It's been in only for like, I'm not sure if it's just before Loden Park. Um, this car, you normally see this in Europe, uh, so you don't see many Normas here. It's a very competitive car on the faster roads up in Europe there on the hill climbs. It's one, it's one hill climbs outright, uh, this type of car. So a very, very well built car for the, for the long hills. So Duncan's brought it here and is consistently making PBs out of it. And I'll just carry it to the end on this one here. So he's done a 41.67, slightly quicker again. And George Harding in a Mark II Escort is in front of you, Ben. Yes, uh, you can definitely hear uh, the distinctive sound of the uh, four-cylinder Cosworth turbo engine. A little bit wide uh, at Etheris, but no problem. Uh, a bit of uh, action on the right foot make the car turn. No problems through the entry of the S's. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is a, obviously over two litre. Um, this because uh, the 1.4 multiple multiplier on this car. It's already through semi-circle. It's going to use all the power and uh, more through the finish straight. It's a 49.96 for uh, George. Mike, look in this beautiful um, Zolf GT. This is one of 12 cars, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it, it is 12 cars, uh, were only made, and I'm, I really like the look and the way it fits. I, I, I like arches and wide tires a little, just a little bit. It has to be, <laughs> has to be not too wide, it just looks silly, but um, it's beautifully prepared car. Uh, well, look, I like the look of it. Um, I don't know anything about it. I have talked to the owner before about it, but I've figured out by now, I've got a memory, like a, I got memory with more holes in it than Swiss cheese. Um, anyway, beautiful car. He's at a 49.15, so very consistent. Just a hair quicker. Ben Hamer, an 1100cc race car class, but the only one with a 748cc engine and a turbo strap to the side of it that keeps him under the 1100cc. If you see on your screen, we've got 22 cars in this class, and there's not a lot between them, so anybody even blinks the wrong way. And he did a 4044, and that's his quickest of the weekend. So far, that's actually bumped him up to ninth, and you've got Richard Weaver in the Empire Evo with you. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if so. But most of the drivers will take uh, their first uh, run in this class. Uh, Richard Weaver already going through the second part of his run uh, of the uh, left-hander going into semi-circles. Ben Hammer posted a 40.44 uh, in his previous run. Richard Weaver is going to try and look at this in a 41.96. That's good. Steve Morgan is at uh, 41.96. That's just a couple of tenths slower than his fastest one. Steve Morgan is next in the Empire Evo 3. Um, shares this with son Tom. Right now in the Morgan family battle, Tom is ahead of Steve by about a second and a half. And then I've got Richard Summers. I'm gonna call him the Patrick of the Summers clan. Uh, and a DJ Firehawk, the family one. And he's been up and down the leaderboard a little bit here today, so here we go. Yeah, Steve Morgan uh, posted a 40. Uh, 2.21, so we'll be looking to improve on this car. Definitely some potential in this car, 41.62. That's exactly what he does. Perfect time for him. Uh, Richard Summers uh, in this uh, DJ Firehawk, 81 miles an hour under the bridge, already through Pardon, hooks the car on the exit of Pardon, up the gear, uses all the uh, power of those motorbike engines at the back, through the S's, no problem. Into the left hander, no problem. Into uh, the uh, Semicircle, carry the speed, keep the foot in, and then off through the finish straight. It's a 40.72. Yeah, uh, you got uh, 407.22, so a little bit quicker again. Keeps making gains on that tenth of time. I got Dylan Flesher on. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, Dylan Flesher's with you in the OMS. I've just got a problem on the start line. So, Dylan, to you. Yes, uh, Dylan already through the S's, 93 miles an hour under the bridge. That is very quick for uh, this uh, class of cars, up to 1100cc. Uh, it's going through this, but I believe we might have a flag on the hill. I could hear uh, an engine sort of um, dying. I don't see from... No, I can view. see it. It's about 50 yards from the finish line. The car's just stopped. 
So some sort of mechanical. The car is stopped just before the finish line. It's the marshal's trying to. It's like, will it go? So I don't know. This might be a gear problem. He's really having trouble getting going. Okay, he's got it going. He's crossed the line in about three hours and 22 minutes, but he has got it got it through there. Um, I can't see the number on the car, but the yellow car it says thank you all the marshals, which I will say on behalf, thank you all the marshals and the rescue crews. Uh, paddock marshals there. It takes a lot of volunteers to get this going. They went to start the car in the tire warm-up area, and all of a sudden I heard uh, nothing. Uh, the engine was running. I don't know if it's a clutch or a drive shaft, but something, the car stopped drivers having to get out. So. Based on the head bobbing, I suggest some sort of mechanical failure. The question is, like, oh, oh darn, we might have broken something, would be the polite way of saying it. So it looks like uh, they're going to have to get the car back into the paddock, and that's going to be another one with the spanners out. Uh, I'm just looking in the paddock right now. We've got uh, Alex, looks like he's going to go for a run in his car. He's sitting in the car now, so I'm not sure if he uh, is going to run it or they're just doing some adjustments and mucking about. <laughs> That's a professional term, by the way, but you've got Richard Walker in an OMS CF04 with you. Yes, uh, already through. It's her is beautifully uh, negotiated, no problem. And the gears in between uh, and to the entry of uh, pardon, no problem through up the gears and uh, try, and, try and make it as straight as possible. It's not very straight uh, in that part of the course. It might look on the camera, but I walked the course yesterday and it's not very straight. And then it's a tight. 90 degrees into semicircle, no problem uh, for Richard on this run. He's going to look to go through uh, the finish line of 43.38. Um, I think that's an improvement on his uh, previous time. Yeah, it, it is an improvement of about 8 tenths. Speaking of not going straight, Richard Brent's on the track, and I don't mean that in a, in a strange way, but if you watch, he really attacks the track with, the, with his car, so it looks like he's having a wrestling match with it, but he has, he has full control of this car. It's his driving style. Likes to have it loose and uh, loose is fast. He even picked the wheel off the ground. You can see it absolutely bouncing all over the place, Ben. Yes, uh, Richard, uh, definitely uh, a quick driver in this car. 40.85, so about two tenths uh, slower than his uh, previous run, so probably tried a bit too hard. But I'm sure he can get in the 42nd this weekend. Let's see if he can do that tomorrow. John McKillen um, follows him in the Fisher Fury. 66 miles an hour under the bridge. He's already through uh, the uh, second straight here at Prescott through the S's. This is a beautifully balanced car uh, with engine at the front and uh, bike engine. So very lightweight, probably about 500 kilos, probably even lighter than this. Uh, on this, he's going to go through the finish straight under the finish line of 47.94. Okie dokie, Smokey. Right, Robin Williams, uh, uh, Robin Nicholson, I'll be all right. Malik MK20, car 76, 20, uh, 28, 9, uh, 28 98 on the split of Midway. Uh, how's he doing? I see Robin's second in this class so far. And. Uh, yeah, another reminder about hooking your hands devices up, folks, if you're listening in the paddock. Right, moving on. Um, yeah, so Robin's done a 45-64. He did this still. He's been going slower. He's the only one that set his quickest time in second session. Sports Lieber car is over to leader. Uh, we got the Penrose on the line. Robert's on the line right now in the 7-liter Chevy V8. This thing... This thing will remove tarmac from your driveway if you can get it to stick long enough. It's got that much grunt in it. So if you want to, if you want to strip tarmac, bring this car over and block the front wheels and watch it chew the road up. Uh, anyway, tons of torque, uh, but I believe he's over with you, Ben. Yes, and if you re needed a reminder of the power of that car, I think there's a big sticker on that car that says V8 grunt. And uh, yeah, it has a lot of grunt, a lot of power. I think they only use about two gears uh, to, in most of the hills here in the UK in this car. This is a carbon um, turb chassis, so quite advanced uh, techniques to build that car. Um, and I believe this car is up for sale, but uh, don't um, quote me too much on this one. Uh, this is Robert Penrose going through the finish line of 49.64. Quickly followed by Nigel Pete, um, who doesn't like uh, the liquid sunshine. 
93 miles an hour under the uh, bridge here into the um, the uh, pardon sorry and through uh, the straight using all the rev on that engine you can hear it going through the hill now into the left hander and then a squirt of the throttle to get into semicircles carry the speed foot on the throttle up the gears through the finish straight and that's a great run for him a 40.84 yeah, a couple of tenths down on his third practice run, uh, but uh, very consistent there. Mark Schlenka in the Force HC car 97 is on the hill, heading up to the Pardon. That's very steep. If you're watching on the, on the television, that is a lot steeper than it looks. It's almost 45 degrees in that inside corner, so it, it's quite steep. I don't have the exact numbers. I'm sure someone will tell me. Uh, every time I walk through the paddock, someone buries me in facts going you should have done this oh hang on hang on mark schlanker is slowed right down um he is coasting he's just uh i don't think way from the marshal post so maybe he's okay he's just backed off and going across the end uh graham williams is on the course heading towards the torres and mark schlanker still going but there's some sort of technical problem and uh yeah things are getting a little close so they're saying, look, dude, yeah, he stopped. Mark Schlanker stopped uh, just at the entrance to the marshals, where the marshals are, semicircle. So something went on that car. It just suddenly shut down or didn't want to go anymore. So um, they're going to have to uh, probably just checking it out now. Are they going to back it down? I'm not quite sure here. Uh, one of our rescue guys, you see the blue and white on the screen if you're watching on television. Uh, that's one of our rescue team. Um, they always back the marshals up. Uh, they're also first responders, so they will be there. And it looks like it's going to be a manpower job. So, bear with us for a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, um, we'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our live stream partner for today's British Hill Climb Championship and Cup meeting, Footman James. BHC Cup main sponsors Footman James have been at the heart of the classic vehicle movement for over 35 years and provide specialist classic vehicle insurance cover to owners, collectors, restorers and traders. Their classic car and classic bike insurance policies come with show and events cover as standard. Plus, you can tailor your policy to suit your needs with their flexible FJ Plus options. These options have everything from agreed value to track day cover. To find out more, please visit www.footmanjames.co.uk. The car until uh, later on and then uh, probably uh, as we come towards the day, you'll come and be uh, rescued. Yeah, they're actually backing it down. Uh, we're back. Uh, we just want to thank Footman, Footman James for sponsoring the, the British Hill Climb Cup. And your coverage is brought to you by that. Um, yeah, they're backing the car down into a safe area. So I'm not sure if they're going to keep it up there. But yeah, it looked like just a box of neutrals by the looks of things. So I don't know if they're going to put it into a safe place and leave it there so we can just keep going. Although this is Emma Racing. And um, is this a shared car, Ben? Emma, is Emma share this car or is this uh, just her car? I'm just trying to check the numbers here. Uh, I don't. I don't believe. Um, no, it's not Ma a shared car. Mark is uh, is sharing this car. No, no. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, while we're just waiting here, to all our viewers, if you're enjoying the coverage, um, we've got to do that whole YouTube thing. So if you're enjoying the coverage, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. We're hunting for subscribers. We want to get to ten thousand subscribers. And uh, sorry, Emma Race is actually on the start line. That was. Um, that wasn't Emma Race up on the tr on the hill. Uh, yeah, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So, click uh, like, follow, share, um, and subscribe, um, and help us get to 10,000 subscribers. If you're enjoying the footage that Rich and his team put out, um, which is brilliant, I think, with all the look at all the timing and all the graphics and everything, then. Um, yeah, help. help. <laughs> yeah. So please support us, uh, and we appreciate your continued support. If you already do, thank you very much. Right, let's have a look at the Scott Moran situation here. I've just got my cameras going over, and it looks like they're reassembling the right front. 
Uh, Roger, Scott's dad is in there, and I see a few others in there. So it looks like they're getting that car put back together again. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if they had some sort of brake failure on that, which is why the rear's locked up, because the front failed. You understand what I mean? It's just a bias off. Um, so hopefully they get that up. They've got a chance to run it if they get it back together today. Okay, here we go. Uh, Emma Rayson in the Empire Evo W is uh, already number 99. Look at the sparks coming off of that baby going up the hill. And I've got Will Kerr on the line, Ben. Yes, uh, Emma already is through the second part of the hill. Uh, 26.25 midway through. So a uh, decent time so far for Emma. And uh, yes, yeah, she'll be uh, looking at uh, improving on her previous run. Um, just looking at the time from what she's been posting previously, 42.35, it's 41.46, 9 tenths quicker. She'll be pleased with that. Yep, good improvement. Yep, that'll, that'll help. That'll please her. Get to the 41s. Uh, so Will Kerr is doing a nice drift. Kerr, sorry. Dri uh, did a drift out of Pardon. And I'm just looking on the screen there, Ben. It looks like he missed a shift. Uh, you can see him sort of bobbing up and down trying to find gears. Um, and, uh, it looks like he might be going again, but very, very slowly. So something's not right. I do know we have another competitor that's actually broken their gearbox. And I can't remember which one it is. It broke in before lunch. And um, they're out for the weekend. They took the side cover off and parts came out. And there's nothing they can do about it. They can't even fix it. They've got to take the whole gearbox out. And it needs a complete rebuild. Um, I'll try to get that number down. Uh, Chris has probably got it on his notes for, uh, for tomorrow. Graham Williams has launched off the line in an OMS 2000M. Uh, only 57 miles an hour to you, but then it's only got a small engine. Yeah, shame for uh, Wilco, who is uh, currently a uh, third uh, in this um, class um, so far in practice with a 39.50. Uh, we've got Graham Williams uh, going through uh, his run just now. He's already uh, through the second part of his run into the entry of uh, semi-circles coming to my left into the view. He's going to try and carry as much speed. This is the OMS 2000, so a bit older than um, some of the mo more uh, modern cars that we can see in this uh, Class is a 47.08 and quickly followed by James Moore. 90 miles an hour under the uh, bridge at the start. It's going real well. 35.22 at semicircle. So this is going to be a time in the 40 watts. The 41.55 for James Moore. Yeah, that's a good time. Uh, that's uh, a more improvement over half a second improvement again. Stuart Bickley currently second in this class with a 39.49. He needs 48s to be competitive tomorrow, I believe. He is capable, um, but whether he's got everything sorted out for the weekend. The sun, the skies have cleared right up. The sun's shining. The temperature's come up on the track. It's still a bit muggy on the air temp. Let's see what he can do. A 39.57, so it'll actually attend slower. And you've got Gavin McLaren in the OMS 2000 that with you. Yes, uh, so Stars is going to try and look to... Uh, take the lead tomorrow probably it's probably uh, looking to get just his practice runs and he'll give it everything uh, out uh, tomorrow but meanwhile Gavin uh, seems to have uh, slowed down at the exit uh, of Pardo. Yeah, yeah I'm just checking he's mechanically stopped as well uh, it just stopped so I'm not sure what's going on here we're all of a sudden having a rash of mechanical issues with the cars so um, it looks like mostly gearbox related. So he's just stopped completely, no go. And uh, I do have another car on the line. I've got Dave Tatum on the line. But let's have a look. This is Gavin McLaren just heading up into Pardon. Goes around the Pardon. Everything looks okay there. And then it just, nothing. It just stopped and died and, and whatever. Yeah, it just rolled to a stop. So, um... I'm not sure they're going to have to roll that one back down the hill. We'll see what happens in a minute. So we'll keep you updated on that. You can see on screen they're actually going to put, yeah, they're going to back it up and going to roll them back down the hill again. Um, should be enough to get all the way back down to the start line. I see the marshals opening the uh, access to the paddock. So uh, a little bit of a delay here for a minute. We're still holding on to our no R words this afternoon. We will tell you what that meant at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the day once the last car is run. 
But um, yeah, if you're just joining us, we uh, everything went was going well. So they've actually the organizers have actually invited the, the competitors to a fourth practice run for the day. Wasn't that very kind? <laughs> Sorry, I've got Marshall making googly eyes at me at the moment. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, not in that way. Uh, so yeah, so a lot of the competitors are taking the opportunity to do the fourth run. Um, but some of them are ha we're suddenly having a, a, a bunch of mechanical issues. I guess we could say it's better to have the mechanical issues today than it is tomorrow morning in the first practice before the time runs. So we'll see what happens about that. My partner in crime, one of our partners, my pit reporter here has come in to see me. So bear with me for a minute, Ben. Entertain the crowd, do a dance, you know, speak French, whatever it is you do. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, I can do French anymore, but um, I can try. Um, although that will confuse uh, most people on the hill and online. Yeah, so yeah, it seems like uh, those cars are getting a bit of trouble uh, taking that false run today. Uh, it looks like uh, they were aiming for a bit of a rest and uh, the cars, whilst the driver were keen, the cars were not. Um, so yeah, I've got a bit of... Um, sweeping action from uh, the marshals uh, here at uh, Itoris as well, so making sure the track is in tip-top conditions here. Um, so yeah, we'll have still quite a big number of cars to go through, I would say probably about 40, 50 cars uh, again to, to run through today, so if you're online and or if you're here, well you get a bonus of uh, more show. So. Um, Stay with us, and then uh, it's a beautiful day here out there uh, for everyone. I'm sure uh, most of the competitors and marshals here are enjoying this weather because it's been quite a wet uh, summer here in the UK. So, hey, be hey Ben. Hello. We got a message from uh, Australia. It's 1.30 a.m., and they're up watching us, and they seem to be enjoying it. Oh, th now this is great. Tuned in from the Caribbean to watch how Rob Anscombe and Paul Jones get on. Go well, fellas. Um, have we got it? Can you, uh, in your magic numbers there, can you get up what uh, Rob and Paul are up to? Uh, and we'll see if Richard Young, who's messaged in. Thank you very much for your message. Hope you subscribe to the channel. And, Ah, uh, right. I uh, can actually update Ben. Uh, there's a Rob answer. They've had a gearbox problem with that car. They're looking into it now. Um, hold on a second. Chris is uh, our, our our lurid pit reporter has just dropped in. I'm just trying to get some gossip out of him, but he's all hot and bothered. So hold on a minute. Uh, Dave Tatum is on the line, ready to go once we clear that other car. Well, I can give an update on the what how Rob has been doing in the Empire. Evo uh, car number 118, um, last uh, run, so still uh, yet to run in this uh, force. Um, practice run of 42.19. Uh, I'll probably have to go through how that lies in the class. Uh, I think just looking at the best time, that's just a uh, penal to make, but room for improvement for Rob uh, on uh, his final run. Uh, 42.19 We'll be uh, shortly up and running I uh, heard the whistle, the flags have gone down so we'll be up and running there should be a car on the start line getting ready to go I'm just reading the comments uh, from the uh, live chat on YouTube and I can see someone from Tasmania. Uh, it's almost 2 o'clock over there. Um, well, I'd like to say go to bed, but if you're enjoying the show, just don't. It's a Saturday. I don't think there's any school tomorrow, so uh, keep it going. Uh, Dave Totem, uh, 2.16 off the line, 96 miles an hour uh, off the uh, through the bridge, already through uh, pardon and exiting pardon up the gears through uh, that run, a beautiful run so far for him in this car. We're still in uh, class um, I, so uh, cars up to 1100cc. Uh, uh, Dave Tetton was um, among the, well, he was indeed uh, the quickest so far. 38.28 in his previous run is 38.74, uh, just off the finish line. So just uh, he just got this run through, no problem. 
Tom Weaver, uh, one of the young guns uh, of the championship, um, who's uh, managed to snip, get into some of the runoff this, this year. So Tom has been going real well uh, in this um, Empire Evo. Uh, he's going through the finish uh, line in a few seconds, already through semicircle, up through the gears, no problem, 39.80 for Tom Weaver. Next up the line it was uh, Tom Morgan already through midway, up all the way through uh, semi-circles. Tom Morgan posted a 40.64 uh, in his uh, previous run, it's a 41.13 for him. And next up is Demi Summers uh, in the DJ Firehawk, 89 miles an hour under the bridge. Uh, and going through the gears through uh, the entry of Pardon. Hooks the car up the gears through the, the straight into the S's, no problem. Debbie just posted um, a 40.02, so she'll, let's see if she can get under the 40 second mark in this run. Looks like she might be able to do that. It's a 40.78, so not far off her previous time. And now we're going into the Formula Fords. This is Kirsten Dodd in uh, the Van Diemen Formula Ford car going through uh, Pardon No Problem. Next up is Carol Nichols uh, in the also uh, Formula Ford. So this is one of uh, earlier uh, generation. You can see uh, it's more curvy body uh, here in that car. Uh, and uh, Carol is a regular competitor. Uh, she's out every weekend in that car, the car that her uh, dad has, has built uh, previously in, uh, in previous times. So yeah, just going through uh, the straight on, on here, uh, no problem for Carol in car 108. Next up, Charlie Riley just uh, launched off the line in this uh, car again. Uh, this is uh, car number 109. This is the Formula Ford up through the gears. So those cars, um, as you would expect, are running a four-cylinder Ford engine uh, with a manual gearbox. So you've got a tiny lever uh, to your right or to your left, depending on how the car has been designed. And uh, a very driver-focused car. There's no driving heads, nothing. Uh, it's just pure driving. You do the work and the car will reward you. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, monsieur. Oh, hello, hello, Chris. Uh, hello, are hello. How are we you doing? You're sneaking in. Oh, Joey Tribbiani would say, oh, you're doing it. So, I'm, look, he's let me loose in the shower cubicle, as we call it, down here. We've, um, Paul Morgan's just come off the line, by the way. Little Formula Ford. You've seen him before, haven't we? Uh, yeah, so you, you've been doing very well all on your own up there, Ben Bois. It's uh, been a hot day, hasn't it? You, how, how's the wildlife up there? A lot of wildlife today? Well, it's not too bad, you know, uh, we took care of it uh, throughout the season. Um, here, but it's definitely uh, getting hot, so I'll be uh, running um, to the ice cream van after uh, the stint we had this afternoon. But great to see a falls practice run for all the competitors today and the public and everyone online. Uh, great action throughout this day and it's been a smooth running day uh, compared to last weekend. Yes, certainly has. Actually, I've been talking to quite a few competitors in the paddock, as you'd expect, and uh, a lot of people were telling me they've done PBs today. I know it's not time run, so so that looks very encouraging for tomorrow. Uh, did you see the Spitfire at lunchtime? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, well, if there is uh, one iconic airplane uh, that you want to see is the Spitfire, isn't it? Uh, with that big Merlin Rolls-Royce engine at the front. Beautiful sound. So we were really lucky to have this uh, say hello to us uh, today. Yeah, uh, he, was, he was a little bit early actually, but um, I think we're sort of running towards the end now. I think some of the big cars aren't going to have the fourth run, um, but uh, I've taken advantage of the, uh, the drier conditions today, which is lovely to see after the rather wet season we've had. This looks like uh, Liam Cooper coming to the line. And uh, yeah, this is this. Uh, I think tomorrow, obviously, as you know, the runoffs are going to be incredibly exciting, aren't they? Tomorrow, whether Wallace will clinch the championship tomorrow or Scotty will pull off a miracle, but I think he's had some problems with the car this afternoon. Anyway, uh, Liam Cooper just left the line. Yes, uh, meanwhile, uh, Neil Coles uh, just gone through the finish uh, line of 44 points. Um, 
13 looks like they have a few problems just in, in the entry of uh, Air Tourism uh, just early on. Um, so definitely slower than his previous run. He posted a 41.42 before, but Liam Cooper uh, will be very quick in this uh, forced TEA again and is already through uh, the S's onto the entry of so many circles and uh, no problem for Liam uh, so far. He'll be quickly followed by Olivia, um, who will be taking over um, in a few minutes. Yeah, well actually just leaving the line is Alan Warburton in the Ball GR59. Very rapid car as driver. Uh, and in fact, uh, David, his son, uh, he'll be out uh, probably having another go later. Um, so Alan Warburton with you. Yes, uh, Alan, uh, down with uh, David, who is uh, currently leading this uh, class. Um, David, I mean. Alan is always a quick driver as well. And if his son is not competing, he'll probably be the fastest in this class. Um, I never realised how tall he is, and you can see his helmet quite, sticking quite a bit out of this car. It's quite a high car uh, from the carbon construction of that car. Uh, but yeah, it's through the finish line at 38.85. Yeah, Andy Short has just left the line in his OMS uh, CF07 Suzuki engine car, that one. He'll be followed by Darren Gumbly. And so Andy is actually just with you now. Andy already through the second part of the hill. Uh, 29.44 through the S's. Good time so far, 3471 at semi-circles and it will look to carry the speed through the finish line at 41.07 for Andy Short. Yes, so Andy, 41, uh, Darren Gumbly has already left the line in the Little Force TA and he'll be followed by Gary Hill in an OMS 2000. So, nice little class of single seats as these, aren't they? Very rapid, uh, they're obviously enjoying the sunshine, getting plenty of grip and tomorrow, well, who knows what tomorrow brings, but I think it brings sunshine. It was a murky start, wasn't it, Benoit? Yes, it was a, a bit wet. Uh, they had a little bit of drizzle at the start of the day, but no uh, problem. And it was a good. The forecast was uh, dry, so and that's why we had all day. 39.43 for Darren Gumbling. Um, so he got the car under the 40 seconds, uh, looking at his previous times. Yes, it's uh, hotting up a bit, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just looking into the paddock. Actually, I see. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got uh, John Stockley on the line at the moment in his little force PC. This is a all black car, rather sinister looking car, this one, car 123. Uh, the forces are fabulous little racing cars, already left the line, he's in third, third gear, fourth gear by the bridge, so he's really nipping along. And that's 40.41 for Gary, over here. Yeah, it's a bit of a Star Wars uh, sim in this class between the uh, Force and the Empire. Uh, but yeah, John Stockley uh, was going real well. This is one of the turbocharged engine in this uh, class. Uh, this is running a ZZR uh, Kawasaki engine at the back, 1000cc, uh, 2506 through midway. So he's going to be looking at a very close time. Probably, let's see if he can get it under the 40 seconds. Looks very clean so far. This is his uh, first season in this uh, uh, car, so you're still getting up to grips with the car, 40.76. Yeah, Robert Kappa just left the line in the Empire Wraith. This is the one that uh, he had an accident with at Shell's lead. It's been rebuilt by Bill Chaplin. Uh, what a lovely little car. Uh, Zach Zamitz not, drives a similar car, but um, he's not with us this weekend. Uh, best regards to Zach. He's back home in Malta and uh, he's not feeling too well, but I'm sure he'll be back with us at uh, the earliest opportunity. Yes, what a beautiful car to race uh, here. And uh, yeah, Robert is driving this car uh, real well. Look to get it into the 40 seconds, but uh, Stephen Potter quickly follows uh, him in uh, the Empire. So again, uh, a very uh, nice car to today on the hill. Looks it up out of um, pardon, no problem. Up through the gears and through uh, the S's. Try to carry as much speed and into the left-hander. No problem through up the gears through the semicircle. Let's see what time he can post. Over to you. Okay, yeah. So uh, Jonathan Flesher has just left the line. Um, Dylan Flesher, as you remember, had that big accident at Shelsley. This is the rebuilt car that we saw at local last weekend. Uh, Jonathan actually said he's quicker than Dylan at the moment when I spoke to him. Uh, just looking at the times anyway. So he's got a beautifully turned out car, to be fair. He'll be followed by. Adam Greenan, you know the Greenan brothers, they're always rapid, aren't they? 
Uh, John, it's in uh, Flash Reposti to 40.33. Uh, previously, I don't know if that's a PB time, but let's see if you can get it under the 40 seconds. That's probably what he's aiming for. So 40.61, about three tenths uh, slower than uh, his previous run, but no problem. Still practice, so there's no money on the table today. And uh, meanwhile, we've got Adam Grinnan, who's left the uh, line, 92 miles an hour under the bridge. Bit of a uh, spark uh, from the diffuser at the back uh, between uh, Ed, Edores and Pardon. Very quick cars through the S's, that car through the left and already through semicircles, no problem here at the top of the hill. Let's see what time that's going to be under the 40 second for sure. 79.74. Yeah, 39.74 for Adam. Uh, Andrew Colburn just left the line in the rather pretty little Van Diemen. Uh, lovely little thing this one, isn't it? That's a shared driver. And that will be followed by Nicola Gearden in the Dallara F394. Yeah, Andrew uh, probably going to be a bit frustrated with this run. Looks like he couldn't select uh, the right gear uh, coming onto uh, Atari's zone. So that was probably cost him a little bit of time, but no problem uh, on the rest of his run. Quickly followed by Nicola, uh, taking advantage of that last uh, practice run today. Under the sun, a beautiful uh, car. This was a Dallara chassis with uh, an F3 uh, chassis. So beautiful car. This is running a two litre engine at the back of that car. 40, yeah, okay. Just leaving the line is Kevin Creven in the Pilbeam MP88, ex Mike Tregoning. Uh, just on that note, I wish Mike Tregoning well. He's had a few uh, things to deal with lately, and I believe he's got an operation next week. Very best of luck, Mike, and uh, hope you get well soon on that. Yes, Nicola did and uh, pushed it to 50.62, so just about six tenths slower than the uh, best run uh, so far um, today. Kevin Graven going real well uh, so far in this run. Uh, he posted a 43.38 uh, previously in this uh, practice run this afternoon. He's already through semi-circle. This car is running a four-cylinder uh, Millington engine at the back, so about 280 horsepower in this car, 444.76. For Kevin. Excellent. Uh, Trish Davis just left the line in the Force TA and the engine built by her husband Terry. Uh, beautifully turned out little Force. That's a new car this season. And one of uh, our favourites that came third in the runoff last week at Lowe in the damp was Iron Price in the Force TA. He's just lining up to do his run. Uh, higher booster engine in the back. Ex rally driver, brilliant driver. Anyway, over to you, sir. Yeah, Trisha going through the finish straight and uh, it's a 42.47, so uh, just one tenth uh, shy of a previous run of 42.31. Great time for Trisha. Uh, Iron Price always uh, giving it everything in every single run. He was 99 miles an hour under uh, the bridge. Very quick uh, car uh, so far. 2.2 off the line, 22.29 midway, 27.81 at the S's. And it goes through uh, semi-circles already. Over to you. Uh. Yep, OK. Yeah, I've, I've got him on the screen. Ian Tucker just left the line in the OMS 28. Iron Price, oh, slows up going up to the line for some reason. So his run is finished, but he's clocked 44.64, but he's slowed up dramatically right at the end there. Uh, so Ian Tucker uh, comes all the way up from Cornwall. Didn't bring me any pasties this time, I'm afraid. But nevertheless, we'll let him off. Uh, Karen, Carolyn Ryder's on the line in the... Uh, Van Diemen, the Formula Ford. Uh, Ian, t yeah, so I'm going to stop just over the finish, so some sort of gremlin has uh, afflicted that car, which is a real shame. Um, and uh, just looking back down, is that... Uh, uh, seeing what's coming to the line shortly. Anyway, so we're a bit of a stoppage here, and the camera's just flashing around the paddock. Um, yeah, I don't know what the problem with Scott's car is at the moment. Uh, which is a real shame if there's gremlins that uh, will affect uh, tomorrow's runoff. Uh, yeah, so Einan's finished across the line. Um, maybe a bit of an engine malady or something or other. They're pushing Carolyn Ryder's car back. Uh, Matt, her son, is just pushing it back. He's on pushing duties today while Mum's in the car. Uh, maybe she's going back so she gets another chance to warm the tyres up. Uh, what are you seeing up your end? Anything? Yes, I was going to say uh, Iron Price uh, definitely uh, was uh, 
probably a, an issue on the on the car. He was six seconds slower than his uh, previous runner, fully nothing terminal, and we can see him back uh, tomorrow. Uh, Einan was uh, standing actually, I believe, um, third in so, so far uh, through the practice run that we have. Uh, actually, sorry, second. He had a 38.39. Um, they are uh, sending back Ian Tucker, um, sending him back down the hill. So he's going to have a rerun uh, for uh, this car. He's going to take the shortcut through Orchard and then uh, we'll be back up and running. You should have a car on the start line getting ready to go, I'm sure. Yeah, it won't be long, actually. Well, isn't it great to actually have some sunshine for a change? We've had such a rainy season this summer, haven't we, really? And uh, for a change, the drivers, they're all on slick tyres. We're allowed, obviously. The Formula Fords have got their treaded tyres on. Um, but, yeah, just at the moment, we've all come to a bit of a halt. Um, uh, yeah, here comes young Ian. He's going back into the paddock now. Uh, so, as we say, he will get another go. And it'd be interesting to see... How many of the big cars do actually come out for a fourth run, whether they're happy with their setup and thinking, well, we'll, we'll save the tyres and uh, you know, they've already had a good go. I haven't seen the times earlier, Benoit. How were the, the big cars going earlier? I'll give you a bit of an update on uh, who's been uh, quicker so far. Um, top of, I'm just looking at the, you know, the top class uh, tomorrow could be a title decider so I'm just going to look at this and if we have enough time before we get the next car of the line but Scott Moran was the quickest so far uh, 36.14 uh, that was quickly followed uh, by I believe uh, will be um, Wallace who posted a 66.15 so those two are very close together um, so it's uh, going to be some very quick competition uh, tomorrow and then uh, just looking at the times, we got 36.25 from David Oren. A uh, fantastic time for him in uh, this car. And then Matt Ryder, 36.31. So that's about your top four uh, for, for you. Yeah, I see them now, actually. Yes, Rich has very kindly put them up. Yeah, so as you say, they're not much to choose. But it's a whole different ball game when we get to tomorrow to proper time runs and, and the like. And, uh, and in these dry conditions... Uh, actually, Scott Moran, who needs to break hill records, really, to beat Wallace and have all the stars align, uh, he didn't want it wet, did he? So we're never going to break a hill record in the wet. So, so actually, uh, who knows? But I just hope they can get that car sorted for tomorrow, whatever the problem is with it, which is uh, a bit of a blow. But Wallace is a very fair chance, isn't there, that tomorrow, even possibly after the first runoff, Wallace may well be crowned champion, which would be... A, a wonderful achievement we have four times champ won't he which is incredible but this year i mean we've seen the re we've seen will hall absolutely driving beautifully in the new gold we've had matt Ryder obviously doing a brilliant job as well dave uren still getting that old gold flying up the hill sean gold won the runoff last week uh second runoff in damp conditions he, he probably had the roll of the dice as it were uh, and young Trevor Willis, still eternal and driving brilliantly, even though he's got quite a bit less power than some of the other other big cars. But Alex, I see Alex is currently showing a ninth position in his new car, 38.14. Uh, 38, yeah, so that's the quickest he's gone. So we could have Alex in the runoff in his new car, which would be quite exciting, wouldn't it? Yes, I'm sure I'll be giving it everything. Uh, obviously, um, having spoken to Alex earlier this season, uh, this is not his, um, obviously, his uh, championship car, but he was uh, saying that, you know, it's all about the finishing and uh, making sure that he's got that car uh, running perfectly for uh, Debbie's and, and Lindsay. But I'm sure he'll be giving it everything tomorrow and try to uh, snatch us. At many points as he can i can uh, see you in your box the up there richard's got you on live stream yeah wave wave out the window wave out the window to all your adoring public that's it i can see you that's it that's ben there he is <laughs> there he is you get and uh carolyn Ryder's just about to leave the line in the formula board uh yeah mother of matt Ryder. uh well that's a racing family isn't it that, that one um and that looks ah now 
I've just seen Jonathan Varley's car, but that doesn't look like Jonathan Varley's helmet. Is Richard, is Richard Spedding driving this car today as well? Yes, Chris, uh, Richard Spedding is uh, driving uh, his uh, the John Varley's cars. Um, Karen Ryder was, uh, I think, uh, second uh, quickest um, so far in this class, a 48.64. Very close to Sarah Boswell, who posted a 48.63. Uh, in the uh, false run, so let's see where she can get uh, that car. Great ladies competition in this class so far um, today, and uh, it's going to be very good to watch again tomorrow. 48.54. Right, She'll well, be Richard Spedding's left the line in the Predator. Very exciting car. Richard's driven a few cars this season. He's got a problem with his own car at the moment, so very generously, Jonathan has said, have a go in mine, which is lovely. But even better news, Rob Anscombe is on the line. Uh, their gearbox problem, selector problem, uh, he leaves the line very smoothly indeed, so maybe they've got that car sorted, that's good to see. Uh, yeah, and uh, Ian Tucker is going to have his rerun very shortly, over to you. Yeah, Richard is a great time, 39.05 uh, through the finish line, about five tenths quicker, so he's lit, lit very much getting a grip of this car. I had a chance with those two days this morning and Richard was saying, oh yeah, that's got a great front end on that car. So he was happy with the handling straight out of the box. So a testimony to the work that John Varley has done in this time, in this car, sorry. Robin's come uh, already through semi-circles. Oh, I tell you what, he had a big moment in semi-circle. Um, yeah, just coming out of uh, the S's, gosh. He's over the line, 41.77 for Rob, but he was trying a bit. Uh, Ian Tucker's on the hill at the moment and coming to the line. Uh, 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 oh, that looks like Neil Coles or Alex Coles. It's Alex Coles, the, possibly the quicker two, the young buck. Alex Coles on the line. Over to you, Ian Tucker just finishing off. 43.36 for Ian Tucker. So Alex Coles, the young lad, very rapid in the Formula Ford last year, wasn't he? He was incredibly quick, setting hill records and stuff like that. Amazing. So he revs it up. He focuses up now. So what's Alex got for us today? I'm not sure what times he's done earlier, but he's left the line. Over to you, sir. Yes, uh, Alex always a, uh, a quick gun in this uh, car and beautifully driven um, through. And he had a lot of practice in the Formula Ford, but moved up to uh, this uh, quicker car. Uh, this season and uh, to drive it beautifully obviously Kai shares with his dad uh, throughout the season beautiful um, times already in the splits looking at the splits is going to be probably a time in the uh, low 38 uh, looking at the time so far in the splits that's going to be a cracking time from Alex let's see what he can do yeah well Olivia Cooper's already coming towards you now uh, she's a very rapid lady driver but Alex is done a 39 seconds in his car and uh, David Warburton will be the next one you'll see after Olivia in the goal. Yes, Olivia uh, about two tenths um, slower than uh, Alex so uh, going real well in this uh, forced year again uh, today and she's a very great, uh, she's a very competitive driver. 39.61 for Olivia Cooper. Yes, well David's just left the line in the ghoul, fantastic bit of kit, um, and I see, I was talking to Clive Austin earlier today, and he's out in the works at fire race, uh, his own car is not quite fixed yet, but he's trying out, he was telling me it's about twice the horsepower of his other car, so it's quite a learning experience, but yeah, David making good progress I see. Yeah, David, uh, the quickest uh, so far in practice um, this morning in the uh, 1600 class, so this is class J2. Uh, it posted a 36.85 just previously, and looking at the splits, it's going to be not far off this time, actually a 37.02, a great time for him, for David. So he's got about uh, 1.5 second uh, over um, Alan. Um, his dad in this class, so excellent, yeah, very excellent. But Clive Austin just left the line in the works at fire race. I think he must be thinking this is a wonderful bit. Bill Chaplin has uh, got him driving this car as well. Zach Zamich normally here, but unfortunately, Zach can't be with us this weekend. Anyway, Clive, uh, he might fancy one of these. He's got his, he's already got an Empire, but this one's got the very much more powerful engine in which must be lovely. Alec, Aaron Colborne in the Van Diemen just left the, about to leave the line, so over to you. Yeah, I'm sure uh, everything feels family in this uh, uh, 
Empire. Um, Clive has been going through a bit of a rebuild in this car, so he's not been comp competing this much uh, this season, but I'm sure he's very happy to be out again uh, today on the hill. He's going through the finish straight, and that's a 44.4 for Clive Austin. Quickly followed by Aaron Corbon in the Van Diemen um, two-liter car. So this is an ex-Formula um, uh, Island uh, car. So single make series, two-liter engine at the back, already through uh, the exit of yeah. Harden and up through the, the straight. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Jonathan Evans just left the line in the MP88. He'll be. Very nice bit again. Ex Mike's running, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, yeah, so Aaron has finished in 36.40. And Jonathan's on the hill. And that looks like Terry Davis to me. Uh, it is Terry Davis. He'll be the next one to leave the line. Yeah, Jonathan already through the second part of the hill uh, into uh, S's and onto the entry of uh, Semi in a few seconds. It's going to use all the rev on that engine, so this is uh, one of the uh, few cars that we have today on the hill, uh, running the beautiful engine at the back, so this is one of the pillbin uh, here that we have uh, today on the hill. Yeah, 45 uh, for uh, Jonathan Evans, 45 seconds, Terry Davis uh, already went with you. Yeah, fantastic sound of the uh, V8 engine at the back in the force TA. 24.97, great time so far for him um, in this car. Let's see what he can do um, in this uh, final run. Posted a 40.24, so let's see if he can get under the 40 second mark on this final run of the day. He's going through the finish line and that's a 40.10, so an improvement still. Here's one of our favorites, Pete Tatham in the OMS 28, new car this season. Very rapid driver. Uh, wow, he's absolutely scorched off the line. Always entertaining, and he will be followed uh, by Kelvin Broad in the Force TA. Yeah, the engine uh, popping and banging. We're now moving up to Class K2, so this is a uh, racing car over 116. Uh, CC up to 2 litre with force induction engine, so those cars will be running either a turbocharged engine or uh, supercharged at the back. This one is running supercharged. You can hear it popping and banging through uh, the hill. He's going through the finish straight. Let's see why he can post a 38.74 for Pete Tatum. Excellent, excellent. Well, Kelvin brought uh, another forced induction car as we know. I think Kelvin's got a 1300 turbocharged engine. Oh, is it a supercharged in this one? Yeah, I believe this one is running a turbo charge or maybe a supercharger. I'll have to uh, get this one right for tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, 98 miles an hour under the bridge, so uh, maybe small capacity, but big power and big speed uh, on those cars. We got a few very rapid drivers here. We got Paul Hames just come to the line. Paul was super quick last week at Lope. This is a bike engine car, turbo charge. A lot of horsepower, this little 1300 turbocharged car, phenomenal. Over the line, 39.22 for Kelvin Broad. Uh, we've got, uh, looks like Jonathan Farley coming up behind Paul Hames. Paul Hames about to leave the line, scorches off the line, very, very rapid indeed, first 64 feet, uh, through the speed trap at 108. This is an incredible speed on that car, about 450 horsepower in this car, probably maybe a bit more uh, tomorrow if he cranks up the boost on that car. He's uh, the leader in this class by quite a margin so far today. He's posted a 36.48 in uh, his previous run. Let's see what he can do. Already uh, carrying the speed through semi-circles, up through the gears, through the finish straight, and that's going to be a 36.37, an improvement of 110. Yeah, that's thrown down a marker. So Jonathan Farley is now stepped off the line in the Predator. Wonderful car, this one, with the two litre Terry Davis V8 in the back. Brilliant driver, been a serious contender in the runoffs this year at various times. Over to you. Yeah, John has a chance to uh, snatch the uh, British Hill Climb Cup uh, this uh, season, so he's going to try hard today and uh, again tomorrow. So, a beautiful car again running a um, Terry Davis uh, V8 engine at the back. And this is one of my favorite cars, best looking car, I think, 38.49.
Yep, another nice looking car, Sergeant Tomlin in the Pilgrim MP97. I think we, uh, we weren't sure about when this car was made, but we were told it's 2013. Uh, Sergeant's got four litres of jug power in the back of that one. Uh, and uh, it's the owner of this car, she's had it somewhere. Yeah, and she wouldn't drive anything else apparently. Uh, it has to be the act. Um, so she likes to feel a bit of power behind her. This is about 600 horsepower in this car. And uh, Sandra is, yeah, is obviously a regular competitor. Racing is racing, is running through the blood in the family. Yes, well, uh, Bernard Kevill has just left the line. Sandra finishes 38.96, good time. Uh, Bernard Kevill on the hill, sharing with Simon Andrews uh, in the OMS 28. And we'll be followed by Lynn Owen, wife of Steve, in the OMS 28. Yeah, Bernard Cavill making progress through a second part uh, already uh, on the entry of uh, semi-circles. No problems through uh, the second part of the run. But yeah, we've got uh, Lynn Owen uh, left the line, 77 miles an hour uh, under the bridge. Uh, this is speed uh, for Lynn. She'll be going up the gears uh, between uh, Pardon, between Etoris and Pardon. Through the left-hander, this is a tricky corner for all drivers. Hooks the car, get the power out, and she gets a great speed through straight onto the entry of the S. It's over to you. We got some big stuff coming now, uh, Benoit. Um, Anthony Hunt has just left the line in the DJ55 Gould. Uh, and looking back into the paddock, uh, it's remarkably like Sean Gould coming to the line, the black helmet. So some of the big boys are coming out to play. I think, yeah, yeah so this is going to be entertaining. So. Lynn Owen on the hill, Anthony Hunt on the hill, and Sean Gould about to leave the line. Yeah, enjoy the great sound of the uh, V8 IndyCar, 2.65 litre of uh, pure grunt at the back of this car. This car has been holding a few hold records as well um, over the time, and uh, Lynn Owen campaigning this car, 41.72 uh, for one. Sean Gould uh, going through his full practice run here at, uh, today, this afternoon. Great times, this is obviously the builder of those cars. This is the top spec car that you can have here on the hills and uh, obviously uh, the GR59 is the lead. I have news, I have news. Hello? So, uh, Graham Wynn looks to be on the line. They had a collapse front wheel bearing uh, in, in Graham's car and but Wallace had a spare wheel bearing and is very generously given that wheel bearing. So he is now on the line with wheel with brand new wheel bearing. So the earlier malady has been fixed. That's such is the spirit of hill climbing that they help each other around with spares and things. Isn't that brilliant? Don't you see? It's great to see it back in. Yeah, great to see uh, the help uh, going into uh, the paddock and great to see Graham having uh, this uh, fourth uh, final run after uh, his uh, failure before. So great, let's see what he can do on this run. 28.62 at the S's and already through the entry of uh, semicircle, 33.71, so a uh, decent time. Let's see what he can do uh, off the line, 39.72. Yeah, but more importantly, the car's back in action, so that means Scott Moran is still in the game. Uh, you know, we would have hated to have seen it finish on a problem like that, but Wallace very generously gave him that wheel bearing, and it's now fitted and in remarkable time. So leaving the line is Lindsay Summers in the AFS P14 that Alex will be driving today with his mum. What a glorious looking car, doesn't it sound fantastic? And I know Alex is hoping to get on into the runoffs for that car. Yeah, what well, a fantastic sound of that 2.5 V6. Probably a little bit down on power compared to the uh, V8 and high capacity engine, but a uh, beautifully sweet sounding uh, sound uh, of this car through the hills. Uh, it was very privileged earlier this year to see uh, the first car and the first run of this car at Lotton Park uh, in the pre-season testing. Yes, yeah, so Lindsay Summers approaches uh, semi-circle, coming up towards the line. So she's going to finish in the low 40s, finishes in 45.66. Cars all went one piece, going back down shortly. Um, we've got a slight delay here. So I don't know whether all the top runners are going to have a go, whether Wallace, I'm just looking over at his car now, is Wallace going to have another run today? I don't honestly know. So we will wait with bated breath, but I see... 
Uh, looks like Sue Young's car getting ready to go. And here comes Ed Burgess uh, coming to the line in the Gold GR55. Ed's been having some fun and games in this car this year. Uh, this is X James Baxter car. Um, lovely spec on this Gold. Very sinister looking thing in all black. He had a few moments at Loden Park last weekend when it was all getting rather exciting in the wet conditions. Anyway, Ed, um, he's got a very good chance of doing PBs this weekend in this car. He's, uh, he also is a Bugatti owner, but this is a little bit quicker than the Bugatti. So Ed Burgess leads the line in the Gold GR55. Yeah, it was definitely some tricky condition for Ed and all the drivers on Loden Park. Uh, last weekend and uh, this morning uh, early on they were uh, making some repairs to the front wing uh, which had a few cracks uh, after a little bit off uh, at Leuton but this is an also a V6 2.5 uh, Opel engine from the German Touring Car Championship so the same engine that um, Lindsay Summers uh, was running in the car. Uh, Trevor Morris is uh, one of the gurus of those engines and Ed has been driving this car beautifully throughout the day again today. Let's see what timing can do. This is a 40.04. Yeah, 40.04 for Ed. Susan Young just leaving the line in the Gould GL. Well, this is an older Gould, but new rebuilt Judd engine in the back. Derek's on the spanners this year. Sue's driving. She hasn't driven for a while. And the uh, main interest away from the track is they breed trotting horses, uh, and very good ones too. Anyway, Sue is with you already. They'll be followed, she'll be followed by Paul Crook in the OMS 28. Yes, yeah, so Susan already through the second part of the hill uh, in uh, what is a competitive comeback for uh, Susan today and uh, this, uh, this season. So beautiful run for her. I'm sure she's enjoying uh, being back. Hawk route in this uh, beautiful uh, OMS 28, uh, powered by a 3 litre V6 Jaguar engine, um, straight out of the road cars. Uh, they were engineered by uh, Cosworth, so they were a bit special in those uh, cars. But yeah, probably a little bit down on power compared to the other cars, but Paul is a great driver and he'll get the best out of this car. Yes, he will. He is. It is actually out of a Jag road car. It's about three. 300 odd brake horsepower, which is about half once on another big car. 43.74 for Paul. Comes all the way up from Cornwall. Long travelling gentleman. Uh, uh, comes up to quite well. Uh, but Jack Cottrell's left the line. Very quick young driver in the Ferrara Cosworth with you. Yeah, well, a fantastic car. 102 miles an hour under the bridge. Uh, great uh, turn of speed. Uh, straight off um, the start line for uh, Jack Cottrell. Already through the S's into the tight left 90 degree, no problems through there. He'll go up the gears and then to uh, semi-circle. This is a beautiful run for him. Let's see what time he can post. This is a 37.34. Excellent, right. Uh, Harry Pick is on the line in the OMS 28. Brand new car this year. And this one's got an IndyCar V8 in the back of it. Quick young driver. So Harry is getting to grips with this car. Uh, it must be a big step up and uh, wow, he's already with you. Yes, a uh, beautiful line through uh, Etoris, uh, taking the inside line, so no problem there. And down the gears um, through uh, Pardon, up the gears through the straight, no problem. Let's see what he can do on this run. Yes, yeah, so um, Harry picked well on his way. Now Sandra Tomlin's car has been handed over. I don't know if that's young Oliver in the car or not. It is Oliver, yes, yeah, so Oliver will be having a run. Uh, Harry Pick finishes in 40.22 in the OMS. So Oliver, in this beautifully turned out filming with the blue colours and the flame, the silver flames on it, doesn't that look an absolute picture? Oliver's an excellent driver of this car too, and he's with you already. Yes, uh, some of uh, Sandra Tommy that we've just seen there running earlier. And Oliver does great justice to that car and uh, the great chassis that the Pilbeam is. He's got 600 horsepower at the back of him. Goes through the gears, no problem. Beautiful run so far. Oliver is a very uh, consistent driver as well. I know Oliver's runs. Yeah, Simon Andrews has just left the line in the OMS 28. And as we know, Simon shares that car with Bernie. That's the latest OMS, the 28. Uh, and that looks like Steve Owen is coming to the line too. The builder of these cars in the OMS 28 RPE. So, Simon with you. 
Yes, yeah, so Simon and Bernard, uh, when they want to chill, they'll be running the Formula Fords, but this weekend is a bit more uh, speed and a bit more competitive, so they're back into the OMS 28, and it's already through semi-circles, no problem. Uh, those two drivers are uh, very competitive, and they'll look to exchange a uh, best time between each other. It's 40.98 for Simon Andrews. Excellent, so Stephen Owens just left the line, and coming to the line is Terry Gray as well, in that Equinox Gold. Beautiful bit of kit, electrical contract from Cornwall. So yeah, over to you to Stephen Owen. Yeah, Stephen Owen, obviously the builder of those cars and they've built about near 300 uh, OMS uh, so far. Um, so uh, I'm sure they'll be hoping to build uh, a few more and many more uh, until uh, they can't do it anymore. Uh, but yeah, Stephen Norway is a very competitive driver uh, here. And Terry Graves uh, quickly follows him. Uh, 91 miles an hour under the bridge, uh, quickly through. You can hear all the revs of that V8 Indy car engine through. Um, Harden puts the car beautifully up through the gears, a lot of power. You can see the car powering out of that corner into the SEs, no problem. That car will make up its time through the straight and through the finish straight uh, on the later part of the course. Now we've got uh, Terry's just approached the semicircle, coming around towards the finish. Will Hall's on the line in his brand new Gold GR59. Very talented driver, Will. 40.34 for Terry. Will Hall, one of our favourites. He has now got a car worthy of his talent. Come on, Will. Yes, uh, Will Hall uh, was uh, very quick uh, in his second run. Uh, third run, sorry, 36.55 uh, was his best time uh, so far today. So let's see if he can improve. 108, 111 miles under the miles an hour under the bridge. Very quick, 26.12. So very good uh, sector time so far in this final run today. Let's see what he can post. Let's see uh, if it's into the 36 or 36.52. Well guess 36.52. Fabulous stuff. Davey Wren, the Gold GR 55B. The ex Martin Rose car that he shares with Nicola Meyers, who's the wife of Wallace. Anyway, he's been very quick in this car. It's still a very competitive hill climb car. Big Cosworth V8 engine in the back of it. Yes, and he does look quicker uh, in that car. A uh, big surprise uh, so far uh, today, but you know, he uh, still has a uh, number six uh, tagged on the back of the wing, so uh, definitely has been a quick driver before. And it's not his first run on the hill today. Uh, David Oren uh, will be going through the finish straight, carried a lot of speed through uh, semi-circles, 36.52 for Dave. Well, the big boys are right, right out to play now. We've got on the line Matthew Ryder, Fantastic, talented young driver. Had a very pleasurable interview with him earlier. What a talent. You've got to be a future hill climb champion, this young man. He's in the goal, the big goal. This is the top, top draw car, top draw driver. Over to you, and Trevor Willis will be following him. Yeah, dead on the two seconds in the 64 feet and 101 miles under the, the bridge. So great turn of speed uh, from Matt. He's run two runoffs so far this season, so uh, he might uh, try and uh, snatch another one. Uh, tomorrow. So far uh, today, he's uh, been uh, running uh, quite close to the top. 36.31 was his uh, quickest time. Let's see what he can do. It's a uh, 36.43. Very consistent. Very consistent. Very talented driver. And Mr. Consistent too. Trevor Willis on the hill. Three times British champion in his OMS. He'll be followed by Scott Moran. Yes, Trevor will be uh, looking to get his car into the 36. Uh, best time so far today, 37.02. And uh, looking at the split, he might well be uh, very close to that uh, 36 uh, second time. Let's see if he gets through this 36.75. Brilliant time. Excellent. Scott Moran, six times British champion. Left the line, hit the goal. The only other man, really, that could beat Wallace this season. Yeah, what a relief to see uh, Scott uh, running. Uh, again today, so uh, I'm sure you'll be pleased with that full uh, practice run today. 108 miles an hour under the bridge, so great turn of speed. He was uh, carrying a lot of speed through uh, tourism, uh, pardon, 
already through the S's, exiting the left-hander. Let's see what he can do uh, through semi-circles. The split looks very, very, very strong. Let's see if he can get it in the early 36, at 36.16. Yeah, he can just dial in times than Scott Brown. Unbelievable driver. Uh, Alex Summers, another unbelievable driver. This is in his own home-built car. His firestorm is not in action this weekend. But uh, he'll be looking to get into the runoff. And if anyone can put this car in the runoff, it's certainly Alex. The, the owner, the builder of this car, has scored off the line. He's already going around the through bridge, 92 miles an hour. And yeah, 1.8. Nine of the line, so a great start uh, for this. Uh, it might just be the first competitive season for this car, but it's already a very well uh, turned out car. And it's been running very reliably for uh, what has been, uh, you know, his first competitive season. Alex uh, already going uh, very well through um, the split 27.46 at the S's. Let's see what he can do in the later part of the course. He's already through semi-circles, no problem. And he's going to go up the gears through the finish line, 38.13. Excellent. Well, we've got our own flying Scotsman now. Wallace Ming is on the line. He pulls his visor down. Sun's in his eyes. Scorches off the line in that beautiful gold GR59. About six, seven hundred horsepower of that available. Already through this 102 through the speed track over to you. Yes, he was hard on the brake on the entry of Vittoris and up through the gears uh, before pardon. Let's see what he can do. Beautiful line through. Hooks the cars through the straights into the S's, try and make this as straight as possible, into the left-hander, 26.03, into the S's. Not as quick as uh, Scott Moran previous run, but let's see what he can do. He'll still be in the 36, uh, through the finish line, 36.17. This is so close. He'll do what he has to do to win the title. He'll drive well. Uh, Jason Tunnicliffe, the other works uh, driver of the Empire Wraith. This is the works Empire Wraith, very, very quick. Uh, as I say, Jason is a brilliant pilot too. Already with you, and I'm not seeing anything else on the line. Yes, Jason uh, in this uh, turbocharger uh, Empire Evo. No problems through this, uh, and then through the second part. But this is so close um, in the top running cars uh, so far today. Jason looking at the split 27.48. Great turnout of speed, the car that he shares with Clive Austin uh, today, so he had to jump uh, after uh, Clive won the tyre for him, 38.24. Historics to come yet, um, not many I don't think, but anyway, they will probably close us out, I'm guessing, but we'll see in a minute. Uh, hang on, my man has just arrived. Well, let me give you a bit of an update on uh, the time so far um, after the force practice run uh, on the top cars. Um, Scott Moran has got the quickest time in a 36.14. Um, he was very consistent in uh, his third run, um, which was the force run for most of the drivers, a 36.16. But he's so close at the top. Uh, Wallace Minis, a 36.15. So I don't know what we're going to see tomorrow. Let's see if they can get it in the 35 seconds. That would be incredible um, to see that uh, coming, and I'm sure they can do it. Uh, they'll be willing to push those cars tomorrow to get all the points. We got some more, some more cars, Benoit. We've got that beautiful Chevron, Amanda George and her father. Uh, that's the next one coming to the line. And we've got a few historics and then a few BOC cars, I think uh, Owen said. Uh, yeah, so some nice old Brabham's. Very nice indeed. Ah, and Andy Tippett, I can see there in his big V8 engine Brabham. Uh, anyway, so on the line is Amanda George, drives this beautiful Chevron. Real history car, ex Joe Siffert at one time. Uh, driven, he was owned by Joe Siffert in 1971, and it was driven by Gerard LaRousse, a uh, Frenchman that you will probably be aware of. Uh, very good driver. But this one here will have two litre power in the back of this one. And you'll struggle to find a better turned out car than this. It is absolutely immaculate and driven beautifully, I might say. Just a real treat to see cars like this on the hill. So this little batch now, I would call them priceless historic cars. And isn't it wonderful that they're, they're still driving them up the hills, despite the fact that they're worth an awful lot of money. 
Uh, but this is one of my favourites. Are you do you know Ger Have you heard of Gerard Larousse? Yeah, obviously uh, Gerard has been a very uh, famous F1 driver in his time, and I believe he's also competed at Le Mans as well. Um, had a few uh, class wins. I'm not too sure whether he had an overall win at Le Mans, but yeah, one of the uh, famous names in France. Uh, you'll see him in the Renaults as well. Uh, back in the uh, 70s and early 80s. Yeah, so, um, Amanda George already with you and typically following up in his Brabham BT30. Uh, big Rover V8 in the back of that one. Very nice indeed. This was the car he built um, basically from a box of bits, really, uh, a few years ago. And, uh, wow, sounds amazing going off the line. Yes, I'm in there, uh, through the second part of the hill and to the entry of uh, seven circles, no problem. Beautiful um, lines through through there. Uh, it will be a time probably somewhere around the uh, 49.37, but quickly followed by Andy Tippett in the BT30. Nothing better sounding than a V8, especially a Rover V8 at the back of a single seater. Uh, so. Andy uh, has been uh, the quickest, almost uh, top runners so far. I think he posted a 47.13 in this class, so that's the quickest time. So let's see if Martin Jones uh, can post a quicker time. They were really close to one another. So 47.11, so an improvement for Andy Tippett. Yeah, Grant Cratchley is on the hill in the BT21 Brabham, and Martin Jones actually has uh, just left. No, he has. Yes, he has left the line. And I can see Simon Braithwaite coming to the line in his glorious Ford Escort RS 1600. Yes, uh, Martin Jones uh, running this beautiful uh, BT21. This is running a Lotus twin cam engine at the back uh, with an F1 gearbox. This is a car that's never seen the circuit. It was um, initially went straight onto hill climbing. So uh, stronger F1 gearbox to cope with all this stress and the abuse of uh, the starts from uh, the hill climb and it's a beautiful car. Martin Jones uh, posted a 47.13 uh, so far in uh, this run. Let's see if he can get uh, quicker than this. A 47.39 for Martin Jones. Well, already with you, Simon Brayton, the RS1600. This is one of my absolute favorites. And also just on the line is Matt Clark in that super quick mini. What a great driver he is. So he'll have a battle with Simon. Who's gonna win that little bit of battle? Yes, uh, if you like your rally cars uh, here at Prescott, make sure you uh, book uh, your time in November for Rally Prescott. You'll get to see uh, the cars running throughout the day and into the night, so they'll put the uh, big lights at the front and it will be a tremendous uh, event. This is, uh, I'll give you the exact date in a uh, moment. 51.76 for Simon, what can Matt Clark do? He'll be followed by Tom Mogarossi in the Renault Twingo 133. Not quite the same sort of vehicle, but I can see Martin Saunders um, in the RS2000 there on the line as well. Yes, it's the Escort Mark 1, but I think it's an RS2000. Yeah, Matt Clark uh, through the semicircle already, uh, 42, yeah, and he's going up to the line, over the line in 50.18, so is, did he beat uh, Simon? Yes, uh, Tom is, uh, so we are back into the Bugatti Zoners Club. Um, so uh, this is uh, the handicap championship, so divided into three classes. The stolen cars that we are currently seeing, uh, like the clear of uh, Tom, who's making his way towards the finish line. It will be a time of uh, 50, six oh sorry 58.39 uh going through uh, the finish line tom martin sanders follows him in the two liter escort uh number one five, 165 already through the entry of semicircles uh, at the top of the hill here yes he is indeed i'll give you the time when he crosses the line which is about now 53.69 for martin peter hawkey in the renault clear we seem to have got a few renaults out here at minute benoit and uh and be a Toyota MR2 of Martin Rawson after him. But Peter Hawkey already on the hill, and Martin Rawson has just left the line in the MR2. 
Yeah, I don't know if Lloyd uh, will be uh, tuning in, but uh, don't get too excited. This is a Renault Clio. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, one of the Mark III, beautiful uh, car. Uh, car that is super competitive, a great chassis uh, in the Mark III. It was a little bit heavier than the Mark II, uh, but it had a six-speed gearbox. So that gives you a bit more choice of uh, uh, gears, uh, especially on the twisty and hilly uh, hills that we have today uh, in the UK. But for the here is the... Uh, Toyota MR2, uh, which stands out for midship runabout, and this is a 1.8 liter 16 valve uh, variable timing engine producing about 140 horsepower. Um, so, a very uh, balanced car, and he's obviously enjoying some top down driving. Okay, well, Martin Ross is approaching the line now, and Rebecca Crokham, Becky Crokham, has just left the line in the Van Diemen, a little Formula Ford. So that's a bit of a weird one in this class, but uh, anyway, uh, she's well on the hill. Patrick Hadley has just left the line in the Morgan Plus 8. Yes, uh, Rebecca going through the second part of the hill, already through the S's and onto the entry of uh, semi circles. I'm sure she's been enjoying uh, this force. Uh, practice run today it gives them great opportunity to practice and those drivers uh, in those championships are usually either in the first or second competitive uh, seasons and uh, they'll be looking to improve get up to uh, the class and maybe through the Midland Championship here in uh, Gloucestershire through Prescott Patrick Hadley uh, in the Morgan Plus 8 already through uh, the second part of his run into uh, the entry of semicircles. This is a V8 uh, Morgan. He loves them, he has had six uh, in his lifetime. Yes, he's approaching the line, goes through the line in 55.69. He'll be followed by Richard Morris of the Mazda, which has already uh, gone through Pardon, I see. And Rob Guttridge in the Renault Clio has just left the line. Yes, the Mazda uh, MX-5 is the answer to everything when you want a sports car. A uh, perfect, uh, perfectly balanced car, uh, front engine, rear-wheel drive, great manual uh, gearbox, and uh, they are very reliable, very cheap to run as well, so they make it for a very quick um, and competitive car as well when as soon as you start building them. is 61.17 for yeah. Richard Morris. Yeah, Rob Guttridge in the Clio RS. He's already well up the hill. Stuart Diaper has just left the line in the Caterham R310. And I've got a little Suzuki Swift R190 of Tim Stokes about to leave the line. Yeah, Stuart Diaper uh, using all the rev on that engine, on the rev limiter between uh, Etoris and Pardon. Beautiful line through um, the uh, exit of uh, Pardon, no problem in the rest of his runs through the S's already. This is a very lightweight car. This is the Caterham 7 Street and R uh, running the 1.6 engine. So uh, a very light and nimble car. It's beautifully driven by uh, Stuart Depot uh, today. Yes, yeah, so Stuart Diaper just finishing 47.52. Tim Stokes is on the hill in the Suzuki Swift Sport. And coming to the line, I've got a little MG Midget, uh, car 194 of Colin Richards in the MG Midget. So he'll. So over to you for Tim Stokes. Yeah, this is a uh, great example of what you can do in hill climb is take your standard car and uh, enter the car into uh, one of the championships that you have in the different hills here in the UK and then you can get up and running so he's probably driven the car to the event um, today and he's just enjoying himself this is running a handicap car uh, handicap sorry in this uh, section of cars therefore are uh, you competing against yourself is the first competition that we all have and it starts when we get up in the morning I'm just uh, very pleased to see young Ben Bonfield on the line in the little Jedi Mark IV he's had a few issues to deal with this year with the crash at Gersten engine maladies but anyway it's great to see him back in his original car absolutely super so young ben always a trier uh and you'll have him in your sight about now yeah what a wonderful car uh, to see uh, on the hill and uh, yeah the jedi are very uh, look like very simple car but very uh, quick cars quite a short wheelbase but that gives them uh, great handling uh, characteristics through the twisty bits and this is where they make up 
all the time, uh, usually powered by bike engine, so probably turning about you know 120, 140 horsepower. Um, at the back, he'll be going through the finish straight. Let's see what time he can post this at 44.21. Excellent. Well, Maggie Richards has already left the line in the Clio RS200, uh, which you're all about, and I can't see any more runners and riders, but uh, have a look at her. Uh, Maggie uh, in this, uh, I believe, shared car. Uh, this is, uh, again, the Clio 3. And, uh, yeah, uh, Maggie going through uh, a final run of the day before uh, she can uh, head back to the paddock and relax for a bit um, after... Uh, a bit of uh, adrenaline flowing through uh, body. Yeah, I'm just told there might be a dual drive coming back down. We're not quite sure, but obviously not many more runners and riders, and I'll keep you in the loop. But uh, Maggie Richards is going around semi-circle. Well, you did mention that was a shared drive. Perhaps she's got to come back down. Anyway, she finishes in 58.28. Uh, actually, I can see what looks like a Formula Ford uh, that's going to have a go. Uh, Double driven Formula Ford. Yeah, so car 871. Uh, that's, yeah, that was Becky Crocombe's car, wasn't it? So uh, that's, uh, in fact, it's Lawrence Marks who's going to be driving that car. Now, the Van Diemen RF84, 1600cc Formula Ford, leaves the line. Whether there's any more, we will find out in a minute. Yes, 2.5 seconds off the line. Uh, decent uh, start time for the Formula Ford and Lawrence are 66 miles an hour under the bridge into the entry of Vettoris. This is a tricky corner. He goes up and down and so uh, catches a few drivers. Uh, you really need to be patient and pick up the throttle um, quite late because you want to have sort of a late apex. It's a bit of the same thing for uh, the entry of Harden, the left uh, Airpin here. She's already through the S's and onto the entry of Semi Circle. Uh, corner that sometimes catches drivers because it's long, long, long corner. You want to carry as much speed uh, so that you can get the best time and fly off through the finish uh, straight to 52.25. 52.2. Now, Rich has put on the live screen. Join us tomorrow for the competitive runs and two. British Championship runoffs. I can't wait. I'm getting accosted here by a big Canadian fella. Uh, ha, ha. I think. Now, Ben, to bring my headset Yes, yeah, so bring the headset back, apparently, Benoit. Anyway, uh, folks from all around the world, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Been fantastic. Uh, my big thanks to Owen Cool, who's been doing most of the commentary down here today. I've just had a little go at the end. And to Benoit Legende up the top, thank you very much indeed. So I think, as they say, our day is done, our work is done. Yes, uh, thank you uh, to you both uh, here at the bottom of uh, the hill. I've been Benoit here at the top of the hill enjoying the action throughout today. If you're back here tomorrow, uh, whether in person or live, uh, we'll be happy to have you again. Have a great evening. Uh, enjoy your time. If you've been w watching from all over the world and it's been quite late, uh, probably more than two o'clock for some of you. Uh, make sure you have a good night of sleep. We'll catch you tomorrow uh, for what is going to be a very exciting run uh, tomorrow. Uh, it might be a title decider. Let's see what we have. Uh, very exciting. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. We'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our live stream partner for today's British Hill Climb Championship and Cup meeting, Footman James. BHC Cup main sponsors Footman James have been at the heart of the classic vehicle movement for over 35 years and provide specialist classic vehicle insurance cover to owners, collectors, restorers and traders. Their classic car and classic bike insurance policies come with show and events cover as standard. Plus. You can tailor your policy to suit your needs with their flexible FJ Plus options. These options have everything from agreed value to track day cover. To find out more, please visit www.footmanjames.co.uk. Motorsport UK TV, the home of unmissable British motorsport videos.
bringing you all the action from the British Championships. Taking you behind the scenes. Giving you top tips to succeed in every discipline. Showcasing the best equipment. And much, much more. Visit motorsportuk.tv today and make sure you never miss a moment.